Okay! I'm live! I see that I had a viewer waiting for me already, so I assume that the screen is black on YouTube? There it is. Okay, it took a while for the video to catch up on YouTube. Anyways, uh, what do you mean late? It's nine o'clock! My computer says that it is exactly nine o'clock. Look! You can't see it. Never mind. Just take my... Nine o'clock, okay? Nine o'clock, what do you want me to fucking do? It is nine o'clock. I am exactly on time. I could not be any more on time. Anyways, I don't need your harassment. 20, get the fuck out of here. What are you, my fucking boss? All right, anyways, we got a lot of stuff to do today. It's going to be a busy day today. Um, so there's some housekeeping stuff to get through, uh, as usual. Um, and uh, then we'll just, we'll just jump right on into games. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, first, go, okay, got it. Go away, Google. Uh, okay, so first, uh, some slight changes to the, the rating system. Not much. So, um... Last time, I had introduced the uh, quality store page category, and I actually, after, like, going through and, like, adding some of these categories back in, or, like, answering the, the whatever, like, updating these before, you know, any games that were before I had introduced the question, updating them to answer that question, um, uh, I, like, while I was answering these questions, whether it's yes or no, I was really trying to think on how exactly I want to answer this question, because it's so... What makes a quality store page? Like, it's kind of up in the air, but... So, I was really debating whether I wanted to keep this category or not. However, coincidentally, as I've been mentioning, uh, I think, last stream and the stream before, I'm working on getting a beta test of my game up. That is actually up now, and it's been distributed to a few people. And I think the best way to show what I expect for a store page to get a yes here or not is that I need to lead by example. And so I'm going to show you my store page. You can't access it right now. It's You are required to have a password in order to see the store page. So we're going to look at my store page here on stream. Sorry, you can't personally preview it unless I've sent you a code, um, in which case you obviously have access to it. So, like I said, this is kind of like a beta, a beta test for my own personal store page. And this is the kind of thing that I'm looking for. There's still been a few games that like eh, almost kind of hit the mark. But to me, like if we're looking at an itch page, what I'm looking for is, um, I want to see a banner. I want to see a well thought out design. I don't just want to see it as white. Um, you you can have a background. You don't have to have a background because most of the important stuff is going to be here in the information. And breaking the information up with headers is going to be the important part. And if those headers, this is also pretty important. Those headers should stand out as well, so you can so you know what they are. Um, having GIFs as well is going to be really important because, especially for RPG Maker games, especially for RPG Maker games, they all look the fucking same. So you need to show what your game looks like in motion. Show interesting parts, things that have interesting things going on that catches people's attention, that shows how your game is not just another fucking piece of shit that's come out of this engine, you know? So, um, yeah, so this is, I guess, my benchmark. I mean, there's still some things I would personally change about this as well, but I think this is really what you should be aiming for. So you have your, you have a banner, you have plenty of gifts here. You should have some screenshots too. I don't have any screenshots, um, because for exactly what I just said, RPG Maker doesn't look interesting in screenshots, unless you've done a lot of custom work. If you have a lot of custom work where your game doesn't look like RPG Maker, great. Then you can show screenshots of that. Unfortunately, my game, and I think a lot of other people's games, look like mostly just another RPG Maker game. So it probably looks its best when it's in motion and not when it's a static still. 
Um, then you have, like I said, you have uh, some banners to separate different different aspects of your game here. So I have these banners. They're a little bit chunky for my taste. I would probably thin these banners out. But again, this is sort of just a beta test for my own store page anyways. So this is not the, the final version. I'd also probably, like, a lot of these start off with, like, uh, a brief summary before going into some bullet points down here. Um, I would probably, like, make this brief summary kind of stand out, give it, like, a bold font or, or scale the font size up um, and then put these with actual bullet points not I mean they are bullet points but I'd actually use like the bullet point categorization so like that um, so and it's the same thing down here you know I would you know there's a summary here I should put that in bold but anyways you get the idea is that um, you're trying to sell your game and so it needs to look like you care as much about your game being downloaded as you cared about making the game itself. When you uh, just kind of slap together a store page with like very few pictures, um, you didn't really separate your, 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 your sales pitch out into different parts. It just kind of, if your sales pitch just looks like you're just kind of rambling points off the top of your head instead of actually something that's well considered, you know, like that, it it doesn't look like you really care about selling your game to people. It doesn't look like you care about selling your game to people. It's just that. So, um, yeah. So, like I said, uh, what what qualifies a quality store page? I don't know. There's some games in here that I like. I, it's like, yeah, it has screenshots in there. And they did have some titles, but also it's like not enough information about the game. So, like, even still, like, this is not the perfect example but going forward basically this is the benchmark is what i'm saying if i can do this for my game i am a single developer okay i don't have anyone who's making any of this stuff for me i put all of this together myself if i can do this you can do this too and it is important that you do this if you are trying to get people to download your game. If you're not, if it's just a hobby that you're just like sharing with friends and stuff, that's totally okay. You don't have to have a quality store page like this. It's totally okay to put a few paragraphs and call it good. But if you are someone who's trying to get people to download your game, do not expect them to be interested in downloading your game if all you do is just put a wall of text up. Or nothing. I mean, obviously, I've seen plenty of games where they don't even put, like, they put one screenshot and, like, two sentences, and that's it. Obviously, no one's going to download that. Um, so, anyways, that's the main bit of housekeeping here. I've adjusted the strictness of quality store page. This is the benchmark. We're following this. If you can't do this, then you get a no for quality store page. I also bring this up, too, because um, the person who requested uh, that I add this question to my list last time, the developer of the Oni Sellsword, um, which ironically got a no, um, had left a comment asking um, what they, what what would be, what would qu qualify as a quality, um, as a quality store page. Um, I actually didn't answer that question, which I feel kind of bad about. <laughs> I wonder if they'll see this. I hope they do. Um, but, uh, Anyways, uh, this is basically to answer that question. This, this is what a quality store page looks like. Um, and I think the one thing that I think is also, it's, it's kind of like the smaller you are, um, the more important it is to do stuff like this. When you start getting to AAA space, a lot of their marketing has already been done through word of mouth, trailers, just... Um, you know, especially if it's a franchise, then just existing knowledge of that franchise. You know, like, Halo doesn't have to do all this work in selling you on what Halo is because people who are interested in Halo already know what Halo is, right? They still have marketing, of course, but they're putting that marketing money somewhere else. As you, as an indie developer, this might be the only place someone has ever heard about your game. They might not have heard of... They might not have heard of your game anywhere else. So you as an indie developer, I think this is the important place you really need to put effort in if you want people to download your game. So like I said, AAA developers sometimes don't do this. They can get away with that. They already got a lot of marketing bucks behind everything else. They don't need to put marketing bucks behind their store page. 
The smaller you are, the more important it is to have a really nice store page. So that's the, the first important bit of housekeeping I wanted to get through. Um, it, so yeah, I've gone back through and I've adjusted some of these uh, quality store page ratings. Um, so I don't know if all of them reflect it. Like some of these, like, uh, I'm going to bring up fish again. I brought up fish last time and I'm bringing it up now. Like this one is like really borderline for me. Like they have good screenshots here that tell you like what HUD elements are and they kind of explain stuff. But on the other hand, it's also like sort of lacking. But then again, I guess it's also like it's lacking information. But then again, I guess the game is also simple. So it's kind of like it, it it's up in the air on um, whether it's actually a, a good store page or not. I think I went ahead and gave it a yes anyways, is, right? That's what I did? Yeah, I did. I went ahead and gave it a yes anyways because it's pretty close. Um, so, yeah. So it, it's, it's tough to say for some games. All uh, right. Uh, what's the other one? Uh, we talked about my store page, so there we go. Um, I wanted to bring up... So, so Ligia, so whatever, this game that we played last time, as I suspected, uh, they did actually reply to me, uh, here, right down here. So, uh, yeah, so they gave me a reply to my, my, my review on their game. So they're the first, first Unity developers to actually, uh, reply. And so some things they did confirm is yes, they are using AI voice acting. Um, Mr. Orc actually confirmed that in the comments last time as well. So, but anyways, just to, for those who obviously didn't see that comment, yes, indeed, they are using AI voice acting. Um, and basically, it sounds like there's no reason to get hyped for this game because it's, they said it's not canceled, but it is shelved for right now. So, uh, yep, that's that. So I don't know if there's going to be anything, <laughs> anything else to come from that. Um... So yeah, I think that's going to cover most of the housekeeping. Uh, our first game that we're going to play is Heartland. Um, and by the way, uh, I might be taking shots later and getting pretty drunk, so we're starting off pretty light with the drinks today. Oh, I didn't even bring my alcohol over here. Well, that's okay. So we're starting with Heartland. Now, Heartland's not really a new game. It's actually pretty old. Um, the reason why is because, so I've been going through, you know, I've been editing the stream highlights, right? And I just recently got to starting to edit the IGMC streams that I did back in August. And, um, you know, one of the first games I played on there was Faded Blue. And while I was editing through Faded Blue, I just, I, I, it had a lot of problems rewatching. I realized, uh, I think, I think I gave it a really high score. I, I think I give it a really high rating on IGMC. Um, and it probably didn't deserve that. Because after re-watching the stream, there is a lot of fucking problems with this game. <laughs> However, it also has a lot of fucking heart. And I really, really loved the writing as I was re-watching it. I remember, like, I remember really liking the writing um, when I was playing it. But after re-watching and editing the stream, I remembered, like, yeah, it's really funny. It is a well-written game and the uh world itself is like beautifully detailed so out of curiosity i wanted to see if any progress had been made on this and, and unfortunately no there hasn't really been any updates on the game since igmc which is a little bit disappointing um but i was curious to see if the developer had actually made any other games so um you know i went to view all and oh i noticed that heartland was here and um, it's kind of sad that it doesn't really have any comments on it or anything. This was actually released in 2018. Yeah, this was released in 2018. Um, so anyways, uh, it looks like the quality mapping is on display here again, just like in um, Faded Blue. So just out of curiosity, uh, I decided I want to play uh, Phase. Dev Fay or whatever you want to call this person. Uh, I wanted to play their other game and just see what it's like. So uh, here we are. Here's Heartland. Uh, you walked unspeakable distances until you found this peculiar forest. 
A glade immersed you in peace. As you kept walking, you found a place full of life, Heartland. Everything here gives you the peace you have been craving for, yet you keep trying opening your eyes. You do not remember anything about yourself. If you do open them, you'll get to see the truth. And sometimes the pitch black darkness is better is a better place to stay in. Oh, it sounds like a Matrix kind of thing. <laughs> so, anyway, so, yeah. Uh, I think there's not going to be much combat. If you know, There is definitely combat, because here's a picture of combat here. Um, but I think it's more about the story and less about the combat. So we'll, we'll see how this goes. Uh, let's open the timer up. I've also, uh, set the timer back to 35 minutes. Uh, here's the thing, uh, Eon Fighter, which we're going to be playing later, um, is actually a commercial game. Uh, last time, actually, Fortuna, you probably remember, we, you, th you thought the guy was, was spam. Uh, the guy came into chat and asked if I wanted a key to his game. And I said yes. So he sent that to me pretty much right away. Um, so since it's a commercial game, I'm going to go ahead and give him 45 minutes on the clock. So that's just basically how this is going to work, I think, from now on. It's 35 minutes for the games I pick, uh, 45 minutes for anyone that submits a game to me. I think that's pretty fair. Um, or if I just feel a like game. I don't know. There's no rule to the, the timer. I picked 35 because last time 45 was too long. That's, that's just it. Let's start the timer. And launch Heartland. And it's a VX Ace game, of course. Which means it's gonna minimize everything. This camera. It's minimize everything. Heartland. So no WASD, of course. So I've mentioned this in the past. I guess this is not terrible. Start is pretty obvious. Remember, I get it. It's load. And withdraw, I assume, just means quit. I've mentioned this before. I really don't like it when games get cute with... Um, like UI stuff, um, unless you are like 100% sure that players are gonna like understand what you're trying to, to say, I wouldn't do this. It just adds needless confusion to your game. It it doesn't it doesn't help anything. I don't. Think. And there's no options here. I get that it's a VX Ace game, but um, yeah. It'd be nice if there's an options menu at the start. Uh, also, this is a problem, so... <laughs> so the, I can't read a portion of classic mode because it's covered up by the... <laughs> by the choice here. That's great. Uh, let's see. Caution! Heartland, while a game mainly focused on storytelling and atmosphere, it also has gameplay mechanics that rely upon hard, decisive battles. There are a few... There are few encounters in the game, but each one is rather meaningful and decisive. The game doesn't progress if you can't pass an enemy. Uh, Heartland's battles are intended to be difficult and strategic, requiring of several tries until you get the strategy out of an enemy. That sounds not fun, if you ask me, but I get that people like Dark Souls, so there are people who do like it. There's also a period and a comma there. Um, unless you are quite an experienced player. Oh, sorry. Because there's the period and comma there, I was not completely sure if that was a new sentence or not. Anyways, uh, if you are here just for a story or to pass time, please choose casual mode. If you like yourself a challenge, please choose classic mode. Please rename it to game journalist mode because you know what I'm going on, baby! Casual mode. Game journalist. Choose this mode? Yes. I do like that they provide a description of both of them, though. Um, I think it was, um... It was Gears of Phantasm that offered choices at the beginning as well. It's kind of a similar thing like that, but they didn't give you any sort of um, explanation of what the difficulty was until after you selected it. Which, I mean, it's so good. It, it asks if you want to redo your choice, but it's nice to just know before you even make the choice. And it's just been scrolling this whole time. Like, oh, wait. 
you've been airing this whole time how long? Perhaps too much to remember. The unfathomable desert, the bleak mountains, the sea whom yonder afar, you've left it all behind. At least it's kind of slow. You no longer feel thirst, you no longer feel hunger, you do not recall getting a sleep name for a good time. On the other hand, I kind of wish the text would scroll faster, but you would wait the same amount of time. Yet you've come here to Heartland. The awry path led you through the dense foliage where the treetops seemed to steal all perceptible light until a comforting meadow led for sun rays to pass into a soft... I don't even know what that word is. <laughs> you feel at peace. You feel blissful. It seems like someone busted out the thesaurus. You keep walking, although you may not have the need to do it again. This mayhap is your stop. The end of the road. Your road. As you enter its realm, the whispering wind tells you of unspoken ghostly tales of the past. Though you do, though you don't notice. is this place for you, yet you feel like home. Is it not auto-progressing now? Okay, I guess not. You wander throughout a forest, a weird monolith, and a heart-shaped lake. Is that what that's supposed to be? path leads south, in which a warming hamlet draweth nigh. Is this RTP? VXA's RTP? It looks really nice, honestly. Whatever it is. Oh, there's even changes in the footstep sounds. It's actually pretty nice. nice art wherever it came from if it's original or if it's uh, some asset pack i don't know but either way looks well done upon the monolith's presence all your fears vanish away the feeling you get is about uh, so small on my screen i cannot tell what that says hang on of like the higher the pixel density has gotten for tiles it's kind of like the uglier because the <laughs> you wind up in like this weird like realm of where it's like the art style is pixel art i'm doing hand gestures over here and you can't even see um where it looks like pixel art but it's not pixel art of any generation of pixel art like it's not nes style and it's not like SNES style it's just some weird amalgamation of like high pixel density for pixel art but otherwise very low density for just game art <laughs> so i don't know but uh yeah i think i i found myself feeling more attracted towards like sort of 16-bit style, which is kind of what this is reminiscent of. Uh, 
upon the monolith's presence, all your fears vanish away. The feeling you get is a... Oh yeah, I, this, this word. The surface of it is covered by undecipherable balderdash. Dude, chill out with your with your thesaurus there, man. There's a weird like delay on the input. I think it's because it's grid-based movement, but your movement, your player well no not really, it doesn't feel like it now. what it is. Just a moment ago, it felt like there was just like a weird delay on input, but I guess I don't feel it anymore. I don't know. Okay, it sucks that your character starts down here. I didn't know where the character was. They're kind of obscured by the trees. But that's a nice little effect that they got going there. I kind of wish it'd go a little bit more transparent. This looks really nice, though. Yeah, this developer's really good at- Okay, where did my character go? Now I'm stuck? I... Oh, there we go. It's because this tree- This tree here is not going transparent. Or ever. Did it ever go transparent? I don't think it ever went transparent. So I kind of, like, lose where my character is here. Like, I'm pushing all sorts of different keys, but where- There. Suddenly I just pop out of, like- it's like a black hole back here. <laughs> I think I see what's happening, too. Um, so there's like a... They, like, used an image, right, for the parallax right here. And I think you're able to go pretty far behind the image. Like, much even... Like, much further behind this tree. Like, probably even down here. As far as the tile is concerned. So it feels like you, like, warp way further than you should, right? So if I, one, two, three, four, five. Let's see if it's five back. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, see? So, like, you go way behind this tree. Oh, uh, man, the music's really loud. Also, I never even got a chance. There's no option. All right, we'll just... That looks like that's maybe about right. Yeah, this developer is really good at mapping. I really like their maps. This, I really like this water too, man. There's something about this water. It's pretty cool. I don't know where they got these tiles from, but uh, they're really fucking cool. Or if they're original. <laughs> I guess it is technically possible for a RPG Maker developer to not just use asset packs. Can walk through that tree. Okay. Oh, is that a waterfall? God damn. I wish I could, like, make this bigger at least. It's so tiny on my fucking screen. In fact, actually, it's not gonna... Yeah, I don't think it's gonna ruin the stream if I move it over to my other screen. So I'm just gonna move it over there, because my other screen's only 1080p, so therefore less pixels on screen means it's a larger image. I'm just exploring. I know it wanted me to go to those three different things. That was an interesting effect that looked a little bit jank, but also that was quite ambitious. <laughs> that was quite the ambitious uh, effect that they had implemented for that. I see that my text is partially covering up the text. I turned that off. 
There we go. That's a little bit better. I think the warning thing covered up like that, so it turned off too. The rest of the mythical wyvern scales like onyx, beard like winter, eyes like rubies. Once upon a time, he was the sole protector of the unsullied forest. The time withers even the most beautiful of flowers. Such a tragedy, from a hero to a villain. Sun does not seem to shine for him anymore. I really wish I could change the speed at which it does the text. He passes his days there in slumber. Is he waiting for something or has he just given up? You identify with the wyvern, but why, Rose? Why you look at him in that way, almost with lament? Does he remind you of something, perhaps? Who's Rose? Is that our character? Oh, it's awake. So it's kind of weird seeing TV animations when everything else feels so unique. Time to time to talk has ended, Rose. You got to act. You got to kill him. I guess we're just gonna do that now. You wish for me to give you a quick. Heads up. Sure. Okay, okay, hold on now. Forgot how to do this, let me quickly explain it for you. It was bar, show your current HP. Okay, yeah. First one, of course, is how much damage you can take. Oh, second one. Okay, alright. I got that. I do not remember none, anyway. do not remember. Swords, play, command shows you all the combat techniques you've learned. Looks like you only remember four right now, but I'm pretty sure that'll change soon. Anyways, we will omit the remnants command for now. And then there is this little useful command called Hope. Hope will heal you by 25% of your maximum HP each time you use it. There is no limit for its use. You will have to find a balance between damaging your foe, buffing your parameters, and healing. This is critical important. On this depends your victory, Rose. The fucking syntax of the sentences are so weird. Especially because, you know, they gotta use like... They like throw in old English words and like large vocabulary words too, but like it doesn't... Like the rest of the sentence doesn't seem like the rest of the language doesn't seem to flow with those kind of things. The sword is your weapon, but so is cleverness. Like, it almost has like it's trying to have like this poetic kind of vibe to it, but it's not like iambic pentameter, which I'm glad it's not. Or maybe it is. Maybe that's why I'm struggling to read it because iambic pentameter is just, it doesn't make sense in my fucking brain. <laughs> I don't understand iambic pentameter. Um, Good luck and watch out. That thing looks hungry. So it said I have none, so I assume that means, yeah. So, hope heals. It said don't worry about the remnants one. Yeah, there's nothing there. So just sword play. First use normal damage, second use bonus damage. One to cut their guard, two to rip them into pieces. Deals damage based on your agility and attack stats, ignores defense, agility. So X first, counters incoming physical attacks. Attack buff, three turns. No, no, thank you. What a weird... What? What a weird fucking time to do that. Hey, we're in the middle of combat. Do you wanna, do you wanna hear about this, this guy's, you know, family tree and his history, his job, his employment history, his education history? What do you think? Excuse me, I'm busy trying to fight a fucking dragon! <laughs> Now is not the time to tell me about his fucking life! 
Yeah, what? Like, what? That is a weird, that is the weirdest point to put that. Oh, that's no, cool down. It's cool. Wait, what? That seems so dumb. That has a cooldown, but it says first you... So I have to wait for it to cool down before I can use it again. Okay, alright. Talking about you have to learn pull down everywhere, yeah. I think um, somewhere I'd mentioned uh, before that the game is oh yeah, it was at the start it mentioned that you have to learn the battles pattern, so I think I see what it is. It's like a turn order. Like every whatever three turns or whatever it's gonna do this skill and then every other turn it's gonna do this skill. So all it is is about memorizing. So basically Simon says much, but you're trying to do damage. Which is fine. I think some of my bosses do that too. It's just, when your game is entirely about these specific fights, it sort of feels like, I feel like your bosses, if your whole game is going to be built around very specific boss fights, I think there should be some sort of interesting gimmick to them. It shouldn't just rely on patterns, because that's not very interesting. Prisoner of his own failure, cruelty has many names, madness is one of them. And now he stands before you, a gaunt, dizzy, reeling and clinging with all that is left of his strength, to life. Because now he realizes his purpose was hollowly futile, and the many somber destinies that he tried to impede will now happen. That because of you, of course. But worry not, most probably most probably thing is that he would never have found the so-called chosen. You did what you had to. You freed him from his sorrow. That's the end? Okay. So either casual is way too fucking casual. Or these bosses are not as hard as the game makes it sound. I really hope that's just because I'm on, on game- oh. Huh? Was that a crash? <laughs> what what happened? <laughs> Where did the game go? <laughs> was that was that end? Was that was that the end of the game? <laughs> was that a crash? What what was that? Is the game angry because I didn't want to hear about <laughs> its fucking family tree? <laughs> All right. Um, uh, motherfucker, it's... Fucking VX Ace gotta minimize and move shit around on my screens and all of this stuff. Probably no autosave either, right? So... Um, I guess if I'm going to have to play this again, then let's just not go to the dragon. I'll go to the three points. Oh, I should have. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck! Wait, hey. That, like, didn't minimize everything when I put it to full screen. Huh. Can I switch to my normal camp? Not that one. Oh, I can switch this one. Ah, we can do it like a normal, not VX Ace game. Alright, casual. I meant to see if there was an autosave, but oh well. I pushed F5 to uh, refresh <laughs> to refresh the game, but yeah, that's a MV, 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 MZ kind of thing, not a VX Ace thing. But 
Either way, because of that mistake, it's uh, put me into full screen, but it's like a borderless full screen. It hasn't like taken full control of my, my monitors. Oh no, and the auto scroll. <laughs> here's here's another problem with the auto scroll thing at the beginning, right? Because I have no precedence over the speed at which it moves. That means either it's it has to go at a readable speed. So if I want to be able to read it, then it better be moving slow. But if I don't want to read it. I have to sit here and let it do its thing. If you don't have voice acting, stop doing this shit. How's your day? It's been it's been a good day. Get a lot of game game making done. You gonna you gonna finish that game? Twenty twenty three. Gonna do uh, Pixie, Pixie Deluxe, Resident Pixie. Um, Pixie's Creed. Call of Pixie? Oh, wait, why is it so s Oh, wait, what? Why is it so small? Did I push something? Did it just change? Why is it small like- well, well. Maybe it was always small like that, it's just because before it was so dim, it just kind of looked like it was full screen. Oh, I totally missed where the second one was. I saw the first, which we went to last time, the, the last one, but I... Huh. I don't remember it showing that last... Oh, well, of course, last time I was talking away. Anyways, I didn't see where the second thing was. I saw the lake, and I saw the thing that we went to the first time, but I totally missed the whatever the second thing is that we need to go to. So our character is named Rose. I remember wondering what that what the character's name was a moment ago earlier in the stream. Yeah, this is funny. Like we are never told the main character's name. <laughs> Whenever they bring up the name, it's just kinda like we all have to be like, who the fuck is that? Alright, what do I do? Here I am. I'm at the heart-shaped lake. The English release date mid mid December. Very nice. You're gonna send it my way, right? I'm gonna play it on stream and I'm gonna rip it apart, and then you're gonna hate me forever, and you're never gonna help me with any more of my, my RPG maker questions. There's no pixies, only fairies. Ah, it's the same thing. I don't know. It's it's said to go to the three different destinations. Do I have to go to them in order? Do I have to go to the, the monolith first, and then whatever the second thing is, and then to the lake? Oh, there's a weird... Oh, yeah. Hey. <laughs> there's a tile thing going on there. Can't really go anywhere with that though. Whoa, oh. oh, and then suddenly. It's funny. Where does the change happen? Where does the change happen? found the trigger zone. 
Although, I'm not quite so sure. Yeah, because here, now we're back to the rainy and dreary. And like, all of this is rainy. It's just like right here. For some reason, right here. There's a peaceful guitar. But over here, no. Is it when I cross that tile, is there just like a line going across? Because no, I think I'm even with that tile now. Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe now I'm even with it. Say this looks like this could lead to somewhere important, but um, it's all fenced off, so just kidding. Maybe I'll just keep following it south. Playtesting music replacement. Sounds like you're you're getting there. Enter the hamlet. The breeze caresses your cheeks like angelic hands. Can I go into any of these buildings? No. I guess it just wants me to talk to... <gasps> Excuse me, that lizard guy there. Castle of the Intro School RTP. Might be a good idea if you can. The architecture is small and antique. Makes you feel humble. You open the door and enter. I'm not a fan of, like, vague storytelling. And, um, I can definitely say this game's method of storytelling is not doing it for me. I've already made it since it's just a cutscene, but it's the first thing any player would see. Yeah. A rather peculiar lady salutes you. She seems to be the priest of this series. Again, with words I'm just not familiar with. Am I dumb? Is that what it is? Am I just not smart? I can't change that one. Hang on. Where's... Oh no, has it... It's... Okay, never mind. VX Ace has tried to take control of something again. No, 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 no. What have I done? What have I done? Well, uh, okay. <laughs> wait, now, oh, okay, all right, now you can, oh, but wait, that's, that's wrong too. Hang on. I just wanted to look this up, holy shit! <laughs> Serious? for church. Oh. Well. I mean, yeah. That too. But that was actually uh, for the band. So I'm not... I'm. They are doing like this old English stuff. But that's the thing that I'm saying. It's like... They're, I mean, first of all, I wouldn't recommend writing the whole thing in Old English anyways, because it would be totally unapproachable uh, if that was the case. But uh, even still, it, it doesn't, like, there's this weird, just, like, mishmash of, like, 
fairly modern day speaking. I'm not saying like, you know, hip jiving youth lingo. <laughs> it's it's not the goat, <laughs> no cap. But you know, it's it's not like I'm not saying modern like that. But I just mean like just your standard, traditional modern English. Like it all feels fairly modern. And then you throw in like weird old English words in there. That's just I why 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 do you do that? Uh, I don't, well, you're using VX Ace, right? So, I know RefMap has, um, a castle tile set for MV. I don't know if that's available for, uh, VX Ace. Um, how much time is left? One minute? All right, we can bear through one minute. You're rather peculiar later. Okay. Uh, you don't recall females being religious leaders. Perhaps the world has moved on since then. She glances at you with dispassionate looks, yet little it lasts until she starts to openly talk to you. Her humor is mordant, you quickly notice. Faint sheen reflexes on her crystal glasses, sights you hints of her. What is, like, with the structure of these sentences, man? You take a quick look at the painting, the statues, the stained glass. There's also a weird two at the beginning of the sentence. Everything here gives you a unique feeling. You're overwhelmed by it, but it feels right. She, notice it by, she notices it by your expression. Asks you if you can manipulate magical energies. There's a weird two again. You do not know the answer. Yet she giggles, pointing out that you irradiate an aura, naturally being a user of it. A strange feeling embraces you. You do not know what exactly okay. Oh man! What an improvement uh, Faye went on to make. Uh, Cause uh, Faded Blue like, was way more enjoyable than, than this. There's definitely, between, uh, 2018 Fey and 2022 Fey, there's been a quite obvious improvement in the developer's work. Um, the mapping is still, like, fucking aces, man. The mapping is really cool. The writing... Is nowhere near as enjoyable as in what was done in Faded Blue. Um, and also because it didn't capture me the same way as Faded Blue from the start, I just sort of felt bored <laughs> throughout. <laughs> um, which is a shame because, yeah, the like I said, the mapping is really cool. Uh, so Heartland, let's plug it into the pack butt grading system. Polish, uh, no, I think that was a crash we had. Um, accessibility, no. Clarity, I'm uh, gonna say, yeah, yeah, they gave a good description of what the, what the difficulty choices mean before you had to make the choice itself. And uh, they had a pretty reasonable tutorial as well. They showed you what locations to go to at the start of the game. It showed you that, the, but then again, also at the same time, it's, I don't, yeah, I'm going to give it a one anyways, just to be nice. Balance, I don't know what to think of that. Like, I know I picked Game Journalist difficulty. It felt way too easy, so I wouldn't give it a point for how easy it was. On the other hand, I didn't play it on the classic difficulty where I guess it's supposed to be much harder. I don't know. I'm going to leave it as a zero, but that's more of a zero of I don't know. <laughs> Unique identity, I, also another I don't know. I really feel like I learned nothing about this game or this place. I guess... As far as the art goes, whether it's an acid pack or not, it's, if it's an acid pack, it's one that I've rarely seen. If it's original, then yeah, of course. I have no idea where I got the impression that you're using VXAs. 
Honestly, no clue where that came from. <laughs> I just thought you were. Uh, well, then, in that case, uh, there's a ref map uh, castle... Uh, uh, castle thing. Castle tile set. Uh, can, we, can I bring that up? Can we get that up on, on stream? Um, ref map. Um, castle tile set. Hang on, hang on. Let's finish the grade. Hang on, let's finish the grade before we do that. Unique identity. I'm going to go ahead and give it to them anyways. Technical, I am going to take that away though cuz I think that was a crash that I had. So, yeah, there we go. Uh that's going to be a 2 and yep, uh pretty disappointed with that game. But fortunately, the developer has gone on to make much greater things. They've learned and improved a lot since that game. So, anyways, okay. Now, um you're already using it for another castle. Why don't you just, like, recolor it or something? Um, is it this one? That's not the one. That's not the one. First, what is it? First Seed Miracle or First Miracle Seed? I don't remember. First Seed. Such a nonsense name. Yeah, I don't know, but I guess you know what I'm talking about, so it doesn't really matter. Fucking DuckDuckGo never breaks up when I'm looking for. Fuck you, DuckDuckGo. First Miracle Seed. FS, it's FSM, right? So I was right the first time, FSM. I'm going to get there one day. Here it is. That's a, at least a demonstration map of it. Yeah, but you could like recolor it or something. First seed material. Is that what it is? No, it's first seed miracle, right? Are you gaslighting me here? <laughs> Hang on. Holy shit, it is first seed material. <laughs> I swear to God, this whole time I thought it was first seed miracle. <laughs> okay, well, right on, <laughs> right on, anyways. Anyways, you know what I'm talking about, so it doesn't fucking matter. You could just, like, recolor this or something. I don't know. Because the thing is, is like, you're not going to find a lot of things that have a similar art style. One thing you can do um, is, like, if you don't want to just recolor it, then you could, like, um, I think, what is it called? Kokoro Reflections? Um, their art style is... A lot different but I can show you like I wouldn't do this for like a serious map that players explore but for like bits and pieces like different elements of of a map like if you want to take some pieces from one of their tile sets and put it into like a ref map one for just like small little like doodads and stuff to add to it or if it's just like a like you were saying it's just for a short short like cutscene and that's it it's not gonna be an explorable area I can show you like my my hack on how to vaguely kind of add some of the like ref map uh detailing into the more simplified style of kokoro reflections it's pretty simple to apply it's just like um you generate a noise layer and then use some blending blend the noise layer into the into the actual file itself so like it's not like you have to like go in there and like paint it in you just like generate a noise file that's just going to cover the whole tile set then a apply a clipping mask so that way it only touches the actual tiles themselves and nothing in between the tiles um and then you just use some blending and kind of blend it in there and then uh a lot of um kokoro reflection stuff is like really really saturated and, and actually um ref map stuff has like a more sort of muted palette 
to its colors. So usually I apply a little, just a tiny amount of desaturation as well. And between the desaturation and the um, noise filter, um, it sort of kind of is a half-hearted imitation of ref map stuff because ref map stuff has you know like a lot of uh pixel detail in it while uh like kokoro reflections uh has a more smoother kind of flatter design to it it's not perfect like i said i don't want you to think that it, it's like does an absolutely perfect job but for just like i said for bits and pieces um or for just short short momentary sections it um it gets the job done I'm not calling it a, a perfect, a perfect thing, but yeah. So anyways, um, what I want to do next is my, um, drink is pretty much out. Almost. Let me finish it now. Let me explain this next se section too. What I'm going to do. So. Excuse me while I chew on some ice. So. um, This was sort of a last minute decision. That I hope pays off. And doesn't get me too drunk. So earlier. I usually pick the games that I want to play. Kind of quite far in advance, almost like a day or two after the stream. So usually on maybe Sunday or Monday, I pick the uh, games I'm going to play next time. And especially since um, the developer of Eon Fighter got in touch anyways, I was like, well, I'm already downloading Eon Fighter. I might as well look for other games I want. One of the members of my Discord had recommended one of the other games that we're going to play, which is Fifth Era. Um, and then, you know, while I was editing, uh, the Faded Blue highlight clip, I wanted to see what, uh, this developer had done before Faded Blue. So, I had already picked out those games, that just left one more game that I need to fill in the slot. And so, uh, I hadn't picked that out until just today, like earlier this morning. Um, and so I did my usual thing where I just go to the Twitch, not Twitch, oh my god, Itch. I think I did that last time, too. <laughs> I go to Itch. Um, sort by games, uh, on Windows for free, blah, blah, blah. And sort by, uh, most recent, right? And so I went through some of the just most recent ones for RPG Maker. I did actually use the RPG Maker tag. And I just, I found a bunch of games that honestly all look pretty terrible, honestly. <laughs> um, but I kind of wanted to pick something... I wanted to pick a game that was not getting a lot of attention, except for one. One of them I picked because it was getting a lot of attention. Um, we're going to get to that soon, Fortuna. Uh, I'll answer your question soon. Um, so, uh, yeah, so one of the games is like just like a very RTP-looking game, but it's getting a lot of attention. So it's... All the other ones I picked because they aren't getting a lot of attention, but I picked this one game because I'm so baffled why it's getting a lot of comments and attention on it, relatively speaking, um, for it being uh, just an RTP fucking game. So, uh, yeah. So, here's what I've done, and I may do this again in the future. So we have a wheel here, and we're only going to play one of these four games that I picked. So the four games are, we have Alice Fell in Neverland, Stay at Home, The Thackleton Traveler, that's that's the RTP game that is uh, getting, that has quite a lot of uh, comments going on in it, uh, and Crimson Academy. Here's the other thing. You may notice that between each of these is Take a Shot. So basically, it's a 50% chance that I take a shot. Or 50% chance that I play a game. I'm gonna play a game no matter what. All this means is that I may take a shot and then play a game. So, <laughs> that's the idea here. <laughs> and now that I've explained that, um, I'm gonna grab my, my alcohol real fast, because I don't have it over here. And uh, I guess get ready to possibly get very drunk, because we're leaving my soberness up to... <laughs> Up to Lady Luck, and, 
who knows? I might get take take a shot three times in a row before I finally land on the game. Not <laughs> take a shot on this wheel. So just hang on a moment. I'm gonna grab my alcohol, and I'm gonna feel bad for Eon Fighters. I wanna feel bad for Eon Fighters Dev if I get very drunk before I play his game. All right, I got my alcohol, I got my Coke, because whether I take a shot or not, I still want to drink my usual whiskey and Coke. Um, it's just that I'll take a shot and then have whiskey and Coke if I land on take a shot. So here we go, let's roll the wheel and see what happens. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, I was testing this earlier. There's a lot of these like wheel websites and some of them are like, they almost look like scams because they look like scams. Um, I was worried this one might be a scam. It was weirdly difficult for me to find one of these wheel websites. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's, the, I'm not going to take a shot of Coke. That's the wrong thing. Whoops. Um, so for this one, I tested out a few times and I was actually pretty lucky during my test that it almost never landed on take a shot. Nice start. Yeah. The ice is going to like fuck up that shot. It might make this difficult because the ice is going to like smash <laughs> hit my face. <laughs> All right. Well, anyways. Uh, first shot. <coughs> oh, man. All right. <coughs> do we remove it from the wheel or do we leave it there and leave it, continue to leave it as a 50% chance? Ah, chaser. Okay. I'm gonna remove it, honestly. <laughs> Reduce the chance. Alright! Once again, here we go! Fuck me! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Oh, you know, I have the, I have the, I, I have an idea. All right, this is gonna be weird. I still haven't. I really should just buy some shot glasses. But I have an idea. <laughs> this is also means I won't have to deal with the. Uh, hope your school's director. <laughs> no. Besides, they don't speak English, anyways. Um. <laughs> I really should invest in shot glasses, but I have a measuring cup here. <laughs> go away. Uh, I have a measuring cup here. It's a pretty small one. So there we go. Here's my shot glass. <laughs> and this means I won't have to deal with the ice being in the way. <laughs> measuring <laughs> fucking cup of whiskey. <laughs> Ooh, that one feels like it's a lot more than the previous one. All right. <laughs> Fuck. <coughs> yep. <coughs> uh. Ah, should have stuck with the ice. Ah. 
The ice mellows it out so much. <sighs> Ah. Okay. Remove that one. <coughs> oh, thank God. Oh. Okay, we're playing Alice in Neverland or whatever. I need a chaser really bad. I still taste it on the back of my throat. Oh my God. <sighs> Don't die, please. I still need. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm kind of glad this is the one that um, got drawn because I want to talk about this. I want to talk about a game. All right, pour not a drink that kills me. So that way I can be alive for your game. <clears throat> oh, nice. All right, so I guess p apologies in advance to Eon Fighters Dev. I have a feeling I'm gonna be pretty fucking drunk by the time we get to his game. All right, so first let's look at the store page so we know what I'm, what the fuck I'm talking about, and then I'm gonna bring up the other game I want to talk about. So first let's add the link there. We're gonna do what is it, Alice? <coughs> fell in no fell to Neverland. And bye bye wheel. Here we are. Um, it's a VX Ace game too. Um, yeah, actually the art doesn't look the worst. I'm not a fan of making Cheshire Cat into a fucking thirst trap. Um, oh, there was something else I wanted to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, I totally... Well, I didn't know I was going to roll Alice, but there's something else I wanted to show off, too. Yeah, so... I'm kind of, I wouldn't say a big fan of Alice in Wonderland, but I do really like it. I read the original Looking Glass books, and um, actually I have this really super fucking cool uh, book here. Um, I really love this, actually. Um, it's a, it's Alice in Wonderland, but it's like this, like, it's just a work of art, man. It's a pop-up book, but it is one of the most astounding pop-up books I've ever seen. Like... There is so much detail that goes into the pop-up book. And so, like, the book itself is, like, in these little... Can't get it. In these little folds over here. And then there's even smaller pop-ups, like, within the, the pages of the story itself, right? And there's uh, one here. So this is, like, the, uh, the rabbit hole. Going down the rabbit hole. So that's probably... Let's see if I can line that up with the camera. Uh, something like that. So anyways, it's, it's such a cool pop-up book. I really love this. A lot. Um, so like I said, yeah, there's a lot of cool just detail. This, it's just such a work of art, man. The amount of detail that's gone into all the pop-up... Uh, Art, I guess you'd say. Um, where's the Queen of Hearts? This one's so cool. It's it's just so so fucking cool, man. 
Um, so yeah, um, I, like I said, I wouldn't say I'm like the biggest fan, but um, I, I guess I like Alice in Wonderland. I don't know. One thing I do really like is um, American McGee's Alice. Uh, let's look that up. American McGee's Alice. Um, so Alice, the original Alice was, eh, it was an okay game, but later American McGee did, uh, Alice Madness Returns, and it is such a cool fucking game. So this is just about Alice, the first one. Um, let's look up Madness Returns. So, um, this was like... An early Xbox 360 game, I think, um, and it's 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 using like the it's it's this like dark gothic Alice, but it's like using just the you know madness aesthetic of Alice as like this vehicle, um, or it's using Wonderland itself as like this vehicle for trauma, and it's just. It, it has so much style. It, it's such a cool fucking game. Um, which is why when I see something like this, and especially with, like, making a thirst trap fucking Cheshire Cat, like, I, I have a hard time, like, respecting it based off of just the pictures alone. But, like I said, I'm also kind of glad this uh, came up because uh, American McGee, like, um, Alice and... Alice was not very well liked. American McGee's Alice... And then Madness Returns has, like, sort of a cult following, but when it launched, it was sort of forgotten. It kind of fell by the wayside, so um, it never got a sequel. However, the reason why I wanted to talk about it is because I haven't checked this in a while, but he was doing a Patreon to um, support a sequel to Madness Returns. And so I don't have that many... Um, members here obviously alice asylum there we go i don't have that many viewers but god forbid if just by chance someone happens to like stumble across this video or whatever it'd be super cool if you're interested to like go check out and support um alice alice asylum by american mcgee um here on on patreon which is sort of weird i don't know why he didn't do um like a kickstarter or something but, um, yeah, and look, there's an update from just uh, four days ago. Let's, can we watch that? Yeah. Oh, it's a str oh, it's a stream. Oh, we're not watching the whole stream. My goodness. Let's skip ahead. Family with my wife. Um, but I tell you something, that the rabbits have taken off. So in the three years since we started, you know, Patreon... We now have, you know, very often there we go. in a day, uh, one day we will make as much money from selling rabbits as we do from Patreon in an entire... So, yeah, um, glad to see that they're still working on it. But, um, yeah, Alice is a really cool game. Um, I don't remember if there was any sort of... Uh, was there any sort of, like, video essay on Alice? I feel like there was one that I had watched. Um Let's just search Alice Madness Returns. Let's bring this over here. Um, oh, was it the G... Was it G-Man? G-Man lives... Yeah, yeah, okay. So, yeah, G-Man lives. So, I, I like this reviewer. I don't really necessarily agree with all of his opinions, but he's still a pretty funny guy. So, uh, he has a video on both Alice, American McGee's Alice, and American McGee's Al uh, Alice Madness Returns. So, um... American McGee is one of the unsung heroes from the old Boomer Shooter days. I mean, this is a guy who worked on everything from Wolfenstein 3D up to Doom 64. Realize, yeah, but your face. In the year 2000, right around the time the... Yep, sorry. Of course, of course. So, anyways, here's the, um, since I totally forgot to switch, as usual. Here's the, the Patreon. Oh, I'll also link that down in the description along with the video that I was just showing. Um, 
you didn't really see miss much for the video. It was um, um, in, in a day or two here. Like and I said, it's so just a live the rabbit stream. Business Sorry about that. Of course, I forget to, to change. Um, so anyways, um, where, where was, where is, is a different, it was a different page. Here we go. Well, didn't end due to the Y2K bug. He branched off on his own and made his own video game aptly named American McGee's Alice. Funnily enough too, the same year that we also got John Romero's Daikatana. Son of a gun! Thankfully that release year is about the only comparison between those first two games. But I do see a lot of other comparisons with Alice to another game named Heavy Metal Fact 2. Groovy. Both are third person games that came out in the year 2000, both running on the Quake 3 engine with a combination of... So yeah, anyways, Alice um, Madness Returns is a fucking cool game. And so, like I said, I'm gonna link... For the archive, I'll link these these things down in the description below. And is why I sort of have a <laughs> an unfortunate negative view on this um, Alice game here. Just because I think, when I think of Alice games, especially when it looks like it's trying to go for some sort of dark, sort of dramatic storytelling, like, I'm sorry, but Madness Returns is going to top it no matter what. Because, like I said, its ability to use Wonderland as a vehicle for trauma it's just it's it's there, there's nothing else like it it is a really cool game um and weird <laughs> cool and weird but i mean that's part of the course for alice um so anyways um also since we're talking about so the so the get on the topic about this game um and since we were talking about um, store pages earlier in the stream. Can I just say, please stop using this font. I know itch gives you the choice to use this font. I kind of wish it was banned from Twitch. This is a terrible font. I hate this font. Please stop using it. I know, oh, it's, it's pixel font and mine's a pixel game. So let's use pixel font with pixel game. But no, it is, it's so ugly. It's so difficult to read. It looks a little bit better when it's smaller. Most of the developers I see put it in the large size, and it's like the bigger it is, the, the more difficult it is to read. So here, I would say this is a more appropriate use of it. I still don't like it, but at least it's a little bit easier to read at the smaller size. But please stop doing that. Anyways, uh, Alice Fell to Neverland is an indie horror RPG project made by me, King Hamster. It's current, currently only a demo, but I'm actively working on making it a big project with a fully fleshed story. Uh, it's also concerning that um, uh, they can't get the grammar right in their store page. King Hamster, right? Right? So it's just like, there are so many red flags that are popping up. King Hamster. Um, story. Caroline and Lewis are two 14-year-old students at St. Mary's boarding school um, who have fallen into a deep hole in the middle of the forest with no way to climb out. The funny... Was it? No, I think it was an orphanage in... Um, was it a boarding school or was it an orphanage in... Um, Madness Returns. I don't remember. But, you know, it's similar. Of course, it has to have a dark backstory to the childhood. So, you know, it's going to be something like that. Uh, who have fallen into a deep hole in the middle of the forest with no way to climb out. The only clue they have to return is a strange white rabbit. Finish puzzles, find your way home, and learn the truth behind the dark places you've stumbled upon. Are you the one destined to fulfill the role of Alice? Warning! The following game may contain content that can be disturbing to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. For content warnings, please read the warning document included in the file. Thank you. So yeah, here's where it uh, tipped me off that there might be dealing with dark subject matters, which is where I feel like uh, you are putting yourself up against quite a titan of a game with uh, Madness Returns. Um, like, Alice is uh, in the public domain, so you are welcome to use the Alice... Um, story however you want it's just it's sort of a shame that you also decide to what it sounds like deal with um, disturbing content when 
there is another Alice game that I can guarantee you has done it better than you. So the only people who are going to be able to enjoy this game are the people who have not played Madness Returns. Which, granted, is not that many, because like I said, Madness Returns unfortunately only kind of got a cult following. It sort of failed as, as far as, like, it was not a commercial success. That's why he's on Patreon and not, that's why American McGee's on Patreon and not on, with like a publisher or something. Um, but even still, for those of us who have played Madness Returns, it's unfortunate because now it's going to be hard for me to not be thinking about Madness Returns when I play your game. Rather than coming up with your own identity for how to tell the Alice story, you've gone with something that's unfortunately already been done and been done really well. Um, I will give credit, though, while I'm ragging on ideas. Um, the combination of what appears to be Alice and Peter Pan does seem to be pretty unique. So I guess there's that. Anyways, uh, for update questions... Uh, you need to, uh, okay, so also, here's another thing. You might need RPG Maker VX Ace RTP. Bruh. <laughs> you are putting a step in front of your players. The minute you tell your players that it's not as simple as just click download to play your game, they are probably tuning out. <laughs> Peter Pan return. <laughs> Peter, yeah. Um, I, there's a couple of games that were in my random list where they had the same thing where they say you need to download the VXA RTP in order to play the game. Bruh, I'm not going to do that, right? You're putting up barriers for me to be able to play your game. I'm not going to put in the time to go through your, to jump through hoops to play your game. Sorry. <laughs> so, uh, let's give it a try. Um, there's a read before playing. Remember to install the font in the font, fo font folder before playing. Again, I'm not jumping through hoops for your game. Sorry. If it doesn't work, then I doesn't matter. Uh, you're fortunate that it's a demo. Um, I would 100% advise that you fix this before you ever have a full release, if you want anyone to take you seriously. Uh, this game may not be suitable for children or those of the age below 16 as it contains pixel violence, gore and blood, exposure to corpses, chasing scenes, jump scares. De-realization? De what the fuck is that? Characters that are deceitful. Okay, that's not really adult content, but sure. Mentions of physical abuse, suicide, implied cannibalism. I feel like this is just gonna go edgy for the sake of being edgy. I know I, 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 I'm gonna talk a lot about Madness Returns. Okay, all right, we're not playing it. I'm not... <laughs> what? Is there not like an export function for VX Ace? I'm not gonna jump through hoops to play your fucking game! <laughs> Alright, well I'm so glad that it landed on, on Alice because I wanted to talk about America McGee's stuff, so there we go. Uh, we're not playing it. <laughs> I'm not going to go download RTP just so I can play your game. It's easy just to put the RTP in the game. You're telling the developer that, right? You're not telling me that. I sure hope that's what you're saying. Alright, so what do we have left? We have stay at home. Makes it download. Oh, yeah, but oh well, it's fine. Oh, it's just called Dating Sim. That's not its name, but whatever. We'll just... That's the folder name. That's what I'll put there. Um, the... Thackleton Traveler. Alright, I'm not putting Take a Shot on there. Okay, I think this is also another one that said you need to download the RTP to play it. So, I'm not even... Let's just... Try to launch the game. Does it go? It does go. Okay, cool. And it's a VX Ace game, so it takes over my entire system. So, since that does work, let's first of all change. 
change the stuff on the uh, here. So it's going to be stay at home. It's actually the game. And we're going to go to this page. First of all, when was this published? Uh, August 2022. So it's going to be 2022. Oh, wait. There we go. Um, Stay at home is a short RPG maker game where your future self wants to stop you from school. Feature playtime around two minutes. You can actually s escape this time. Playtime is around two minutes? Oh, oh dear. Whole nother Euler to talk to? Why? Uh, I don't know what that means. Three endings to explore. Possible trigger warnings. Anyways, I think the guy's native language is Russian, so we can excuse some uh, language barrier stuff. Uh, so, anyways, let's pull that over there. Let's make sure I can see chat. Yeah, it goes for now. <laughs> Let's see if it'll make it. Uh, timer. Oh, it's on the wrong screen too. So let's make that sure that's on the right screen. Uh, game timer, 35 minutes. There we go. It's, except it's only going to take two minutes. So maybe we'll have a lot of that timer left. Anyways, just a start and an end. No options. But it should be short, so I guess we don't need options. Turn the alarm off. How come I can't go that way? I think that's because there's supposed to be a wall there. Yeah, so, um, that's kind of unfortunate. I, oh my god. I can't see anything on this tiny screen! Okay, there. So... Yeah, I think there's supposed to be like a wall right here, but because everything is white, black, or red, um, you get no differentiation between what's outside of the map, what's the area you can walk on, and what's a wall, which seems kind of like a problem. I think it would be totally okay for them to use a shade of gray in here. You can have one shade of gray to differentiate the floor from the wall. Because right now, there's no readability to this map. I would think I could go this way, but I can't. Stay still. What? Who are you? I am you, but from the future. And I came here to stop you from making a huge mistake. Which mistake? School. But if I- okay, who cares about your mother? The fate of the whole world lays on it. Oh, I guess that's it? Can I just go to bed? I guess not. I obtained a gun. Okay, right on. I'll just stay home. Alright, I think I'll stay home. What a wise decision. I was sort of hoping that it would just like game over right there. <laughs> I was gonna comment about this on the store page, but I kind of forgot. So I kind of like the character design. I like the, the weird bangs that kind of like mesh with the eyebrows. But the actual, like, 2D drawing, like, the concept for the character design is interesting. I like it. But the actual execution of the art makes them look very derpy. Like, this eye doesn't feel like it's aligned with this eye. I don't know. It looks really... This looks like too rough of a sketch, too. Like, you can still see the outlines of the body shape from the, the draft. So like, I like the character design, the the concept is there, but the execution is just um, not good. Okay, let's 
probably not the best place to put your tutorial, but right on. Will I disappear once I go to sleep? Why are you asking? It would be sad to lose a friend I just made. Idiot, we can't be friends. Why is that so? Because we're the same person. What about enemies? Oh, that's possible. Cool. Okay, I'll go to sleep. Great idea. Good night. Whatever. That's it. <laughs> this is not even like... It's just like, end one, and then back to the title screen. <laughs> okay. So what if I just totally ignore that? Well, you sure can. So what if I don't pick up the gun? Oh. I'll think about it. So I have to pick up the gun. What? What the heck? It's a rather effeminate pose. I thought it was a boy. On my way. <laughs> Euler one. <laughs> it's, this is sort of a comedic timing to it. I wonder if that's intentional. Order fulfilled. How many endings are there? Is that it? I mean, I don't see any other options I could really go for. Can I just ignore the alarm? Okay, no. Okay. That's a bookshelf. Okay, so... Alright, so I have to make him appear, I think. I guess that's it, just... Two, just two endings? I, um, hmm. Okay, that was my bad. <laughs> ah, fucking VX Ace! Uh, that's gotta go over there. Okay, everything else is fine. Alright. <laughs> I mean, what do I say about this game? I don't know. I got the two endings. I, I, I don't know. I guess that's going to be it for, for this. Does that add? Okay, yeah. So it's there. do since I'm no longer going to school. Keep yourself busy. So you don't even really get to find out what happens if you do go to school, which is sort of a shame. So if I did kill him and I went to school, like why is he trying to stop me? 
Oh, uh, okay. Well, I didn't mean to click yes. Good night, Euler. Whatever. Yeah, okay. Alright. It's cute, but it's also really short. Uh, I don't know what else to say about it. It's totally fine. How was it... How was it published in August, but then... How was it released in August, but published 14 days ago? That's strange. Uh, anyways... Um, what I need to do is, now that I've taken some shots, um... I need to... Go to the toilet. Taking some shots, drinking some alcohol, gotta go pee. And then after that, we'll, uh, we'll move on to, uh, Eon Fighter. Um, so, I'm kind of interested to try this game. Um, mostly just because it's cool to have someone, uh, submit the, the, a game to me. Uh, a commercial game for me, giving me a key. I guess I've received a few of those, though, now that I think about it. Because Dungeon Rummage was a commercial game, and Here's the Phantasm was as well. So, but anyways, uh, let's pick some music. I really gotta go pretty bad, so what do I want? Um, sure, let's do this one. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna remove it if I'm being honest. What do you think? I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that up to you. Uh, you get to be the, the final say here. Do you think I should give the game a rating or was it too short to really get one? 
choice is yours. And we're gonna take a short, I forgot about this too. Right, right, right. So, uh, yeah, uh, you brought up the Steam refund money. Uh, it is, in fact, the autumn sale right now. So before we go on into uh, Eon Fighter, uh, here's what we're going to do. I have 7,550 yen in my account. Uh, that is how much money I gotten from... That's not built into my system. Wow. Bye bye. Uh, okay. So, um, what was I saying? Right. Uh, I have 7,550 yen in my account from the refund last time, or two, two times ago, three times ago, whatever it was. And so, uh, I was, man, I was really kind of, the reason why I put this in the middle too, is I was kind of hoping I might have a few more people, uh, join the stream before getting to this point, um, to get a little bit more weigh in on this. Unfortunately, I'm not getting it. <laughs> I'm not getting that. So, um, refund money. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> refund money. Um, so I'm gonna let you vote. Yeah, I kind of wanted to put it up to a vote for, like, what I should buy. I was gonna say, like, I thought it would be kind of fun to have people just tell me what RPG asset packs I need to buy. And it doesn't even have to be off of my, um, my wish list here. Uh, it could be literally any asset pack. Um, you guys just recommend... Anything, whether you want to troll me with some garbage or you wanted to recommend something legit, that would be totally fine. And then also recommend me a, a game off of my wish list as well. So, um, yeah, that was going to be the plan. Unfortunately, uh, Fortuna, you're the only one here. Vote of one person. That's right. I usually get most of my views from the archive. But I was just hoping, I was just hoping that maybe I'd have, um, I was just, um, I don't know, since you're the only one here, it's not quite as exciting, you know, <laughs> to get trolls. <laughs> so, um, I'll let you give some advice. Um, I, what I have for asset packs here is, um... I really need battle backgrounds, so I have the Tokiwa, or this one's not Tokiwa, but um, whatever, this, this is Battle Backs, and uh, this is Tokiwa Battle Backs as well. Um, also, Hibiki Katakura's monsters are pretty cool, would love to have some more of them. Uh, some of these bosses are pretty cool, I just, it sucks how expensive they are, but they also come with Battle Backs as well. Um, and then, actually, I, this is newly released. Get Minicles. Yeah, but I don't, but that's not in my Steam wallet. That 50% off is not in my Steam wallet. That's the thing, though, right? This is just spending the money that I have in my Steam wallet. So it's got to be on Steam. And I just added this uh, Pastel Kawaii asset pack. Um, I actually really like the art. I wish I could get my whole game done like this. Um, the reason why I have it here, actually, is one, because I like the little teddy bears. Um, my artist, Simone, let me bring up her, let me bring up her page. That's game grades. Where's my... Oh, it's, it's here. It's here. Okay, it's weird. Um, can I jump to her page quickly? Uh, Simone uses a teddy bear as her, um, like her avatar. And I thought it might be nice. She, she's been so great um, as my artist. She's done such great work. 
And I thought it might be nice to have like a little uh, homage to her thrown in there. I thought she might appreciate that as well. Um, so since she has a cute teddy bear, that was another reason why I wanted to uh, get this asset pack because it has cute teddy bears right there, which uh, I think feels appropriate for uh, Simone uh, here and her teddy bear. So, um, yeah. So that's also on here. This one was newly released, but it's also pretty cheap, too. Um, it's just 138 yen. So uh, I'm going to leave it up to you. Uh, the vote is now. Which ones do you think I should pick? Like I said, it has to be here on RPG Maker. Um, like I said, I need Battlebacks and I guess Monsters. Actually, this is so cheap. I'm probably going to I'm going to add Hibiki's Monsters, whether you <laughs> Whether whether you want me to or not, I'm I'm gonna throw that in there anyways. That that one's Hibiki's monsters are good, um, so that one's going in there no matter what, and then I'll leave the rest of it up to you. Let's start with RPG Maker stuff first, and then we'll go into games after that. Oh, the timer's still going, too. Let's turn that off. And since I said Eon Fighter will get 45 minutes, we'll go ahead and put 45 minutes on the clock. Man, it sucks that I need to get more people in the chat. Honestly, nothing is up to my taste here. I don't like static monsters, so I don't, so it doesn't help. Yeah, I know. I've heard the same shit from uh, Mr. Orc. Um, I don't really like the static monsters either, but I'm just doing what I can within my means. Um, the art is fine, honestly, so... But you don't have a, an opinion on anything else, so I don't know. Uh, I'm going to throw Tokiwa's Battlebacks in there, because it's pretty cheap at 798 yen. <clears throat> there we go. What are we at? 13,000 yen. Yeah, I... So, like, for games, um, like... Final Fantasy VII Remake, I really want to play, but at an oddly 29%, what a weird fucking number. It only brings it down to 7,000 yen, which is all of my budget. And I think um, Persona 5 as well, yeah, it's 5,000 yen. So I could actually afford that, but um, that would just be one game. 30% off is not bad for a game that just released on Steam, though. I know it's been out for a while, but sometimes they... Uh, they're they're uh, they're crazy. They're like, oh, it's pretty much a new release, even though it's been out for like three fucking years now. And so they don't discount it quite so quickly. Um, so I'm interested in Steel Rising. Steel Rising is the game. So uh, you know, when we when we had bought all the games before that we wound up refunding, um, I talked about Spiders because Spiders is the one that did Greedfall, and uh, Spiders uh, did Steel Rising, and I'm actually way more interested in Steel Rising than, um, than honestly, Greedfall. Um, it's very B-tier, as was with Greedfall. It's just what Spiders does, but um, I don't know. Something about this, it, it is a Souls-like, which I'm not necessarily a fan of, but I feel like it has the right B-tier charm to me. I also like that you play as an automata. As I mentioned before, like, Spiders is really good at coming up with these, like, high-concept kind of sen uh, settings for their games. It's just the execution is always very B-tier. But uh, some of my favorite games have been B-tier games, so I don't know. I was pretty interested in Steel Rising. Also, I have a thing. I'm a real fan of uh, battle fans, I guess you could say, 
folding fans that are weapons. I think those are so cool. I have one in my own game because I don't know why, but I think it's so cool. It's dumb, but it's cool. So, uh, there's Spiders, um, Steel Rising. I really love Borderlands. Um, Tiny Tina's is uh, a game that I'd really like to play. If you don't have any recommendations, then I guess I'll just pick the games. And that kind of makes this section kind of boring because it's kind of like, watch me do my shopping. <laughs> I don't know. I don't really have an interested genre. Like, I don't know. Lately, I've been in the mood for like... Um, like classic uh, RPG games. Um... But not in the sense it's the the, not like a Divinity or Original Sin. The CRPG game has the, like the top down pr perspective with the like turn based tactical combat. I'm not really looking for that, but more as a kind of a D and D RPG kind of uh, game, um, like Skyrim or Oblivion. I've kind of wanted to replay Skyrim now that I've been replaying Oblivion. Um, been tempted to just I mean I already own Skyrim. I mean who doesn't? There's like 500 versions of it. So, I mean, that doesn't cost anything. I can just download it that. Redownload it onto my hard drive. Um, and first-person shooters, too. Because I, I was really disappointed with, with Halo. Um, I played a lot of Halo Infinite with my friend when it launched. But if you haven't been keeping up with Halo Infinite in the news, they basically squandered all of the, all of the good faith that they had earned with the launch um they 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 had the fucking world in their hands and they fucking squandered it man uh you know they they surprised everyone with an early release of the multiplayer um even though it had been, even though the game had been delayed at that point but still um it was an early release with a multiplayer and it was good it was a good multiplayer and then they sat on their laurels and did nothing, and the game just fucking floundered. God damn it! <laughs> uh, anyways, and they're terrible because it has to be free to play. Of course, they have terrible fucking microtransactions and, and garbage that just shits all over any of the other good faith that they might have earned. So, anyways, um, yeah, Halo left me blue balled. Um, so I don't know, a, a first-person shooter would, would be nice that would not leave me blue-balled. Metal Hellsinger. That, that's, wow, they already discounted at 34%? That just released back in September. I'm honestly surprised they discounted it so much with it being such a recent release. I mean, at this point, like I said, it's basically like I'm just doing my own shopping. It's not like a fun chat interaction kind of thing. Um, in which case, if it's just going to be my own shopping, then I'm, I'll am i pick my own games on my own time. I, I'm thinking maybe Still Rising and Tiny Tina's, because I think I can afford both of those, I think, with my budget. Alongside the, the two asset packs I just added. And if it's a few hundred yen over, I mean, I could... Um, I could always add a couple of hundred yen. That's no problem. Um, so I think those would be the two games that I would go with. If not, maybe, uh, Metal Hellsinger. Actually, I don't know. I've been, so it's funny. So the Stanley Parable, um, I played the original source mod for the Stanley Parable and I was so excited when it got a full release and I never played the full release. One of my uh, favorite YouTube channels, Doug Doug. Um, can I bring up Doug Doug? <laughs> Doe Doug? That's okay. YouTube knows what I'm talking about. Um, one of my favorite YouTube channels, Doug Doug. He's a goofy guy. He does funny stream stuff. He is what I aspire to be if I was ever to make streaming a full-time job, um, which that's not going to happen. But 
if I were to ever go down that path, he's, the he's year what I aspire is to be. now 2200. Humanity has but, finally invented um, space travel, and now they vent his brother. The to claim the I didn't know this. Is the creator of the Stanley Parable, and after the release of Stanley Parable, um, which one leads Ultra Deluxe, to glory with the his brother came on stream and talked about it, and I was just like. Oh man, the Stanley Parable is such a cool game. I'm not even a fan of walking simulators, but I just, I love just the concept of it. I've played, um, uh, I played, uh, what's his other game? Um, it was a little bit more serious in tone. Oh my god, what is it called? I don't remember. There's gonna be naughty games you're gonna see. I've talked about it, the fact that I played porn games before, so I don't care. You'll find them in here. What is it called? Um, on, no, it's not only if. This one was terrible. I hated this game. <laughs> uh, what the fuck was it called? Oh my god. I, I It was okay. I liked it. It was fine. It was not... I think the Stanley Parable was way more interesting because it, it dares you to test the game's logic. And I think that's what makes Stanley Parable so cool. Um, his other game that he made was not as interesting because it was still just pretty much a walking simulator. Um, but at least it was captivating. But it just didn't have as much uh, gaminess to it as the Stanley Parable. Um... Oh my god, what is it called? This is going to kill me. I have to remember what this is. Or it's going to bother me all day. Is it incomplete? It's probably incomplete. The Beginner's Guide. That's it. The Beginner's Guide. Okay, yeah. So I like The Beginner's Guide. It, it was an interesting game, but also, like I said, um, maybe um, a little bit too linear, a little bit too directed of a story compared to The Stanley Parable. But I, I like his writing. His writing is good. Um, so, yeah. Uh, maybe, I don't know. So, uh, point is, is, maybe I would get Stanley Parable. I don't know. Anyways, this has become, like I said, it's just basically me shopping. So, who cares? I'll do this on my own time. The other thing I wanted to do before we move on to um, Eon Fighter is Steam Awards. Let's look at Steam Awards. So, I haven't nominated anything yet. Um... So, and I also, here's the thing, I haven't actually played that many games this year, because coincidentally, um, yeah, see, game, games released this year that you've played, so, I haven't played that many games this year, because I've mostly been focused on making my own game, so the irony is, is that I don't really have a lot of games to nominate, so... I basically have a meme game here and a game that I played on stream. <laughs> so <laughs> Those are the choices for game of the year. Cast your vote now. Which one do I nominate as game of the year? Meme game, The Looker, or stream game, Gears of Phantasm? Put in your answers now, my one chat viewer. Honestly, I haven't played Elden Ring, but if I was going to cast a vote of any game that has come that instantly comes to mind as game of the year contender, um it would be Elden Ring, right? And I I probably don't even need to cast a vote for Elden Ring. I I bet that Elden Ring would win a game of the year without my vote. I I really think it's kind of like no contest as far as PC games go, right? Because if you throw it in, into the, the group with, like, God of War, I think it's probably going to be a toss-up between God of War and Elden Ring. And I'd probably only say if God of War wins, probably the only reason why it... I mean, it's gonna, it would be a close tie. I still feel like Elden Ring would be the winner if it weren't for the fact that God of War is going to be more fresh in the people's minds because it just released... You know, like this this week, last week, what, when was it? it? It was recently, very recently that it released. So it's way more fresh in people's minds than Elden Ring. So 
I would say that's probably the only reason why God of War would get would win Game of the Year. Even still, we're talking about PC games anyways. So, um, I don't know. You say white vote, and I don't know what that means. I'm going to go ahead and nominate Elden Ring and neither of my, my games that I have there. VR Game of the Year. I don't even have VR, so we'll just skip. <laughs> Just skip VR. Labor of Love. All right, I do this every year. The games I've played. Okay, here are the games I've... Uh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, these are the games I've played this year? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I did play Bioshock 2 and, and Bioshock Infinite this year. I did. Because um, I, I picked up the, the whole collection of Bioshock 1, 2, and Infinite for like 5 bucks, I think during the summer sale or something. I don't remember. Um, yeah, I've been playing Oblivion, like I said. Edge of Eternity, I think I just turned on on stream once to just show it off. Um, yep, saying it. Yep, yep. Pretty much a lot of these games here are just games that I've shown off on stream but not actually played i played bioshock 2 oblivion and bioshock infinite and uh retro arch but that's not a game so um that's it those are like the only ones that i played um so labor of love i usually give it to warframe honestly because they continue really warframe is not eligible it most certainly is a labor of love this game has been out for a while. Warframe has been out for a while. The team is well past the debut of their creative baby. Warframe definitely is, but being the good parents they are, the devs continue to nurture and support their creation. Warframe definitely is! This game, to this day, is still getting new content after all these years. Warframe is! What do you mean? Did I type it in wrong? I've always cast Warframe every year, and it never wins, but still. Okay, well, I got nothing then. All right, I'll nominate Blue Reflections. They're not going to win. They haven't updated it since February of this year, so it's not a labor of love. But whatever, just fuck it. I'll just cast Blue Reflections because why not? Uh, better with friends. I don't know. Oh, I play. No, I didn't play Halo Infinite this year. Can I can Warframe? This sucks. Never mind. Let's play Eon Fighter. No, you know what? You know what a lot of alcohol does, right? Um, <laughs> be right back. fighter Eon fighter let's give it a try
Where is it? It's in the taskbar down here. There we go. On July 25th, 2022, 2283, sorry, the human race acquires the ability to perform interplanetary travels. Over the next 100 years, they discover various advanced civilizations in remote parts of the galaxy. On May 30th, 2717, after several failed attempts through diplomatic channels in order to maintain peace, the First Galactic War for Territorial Control begins. 30 years later, faced with a shortage of resources needed to fuel the war machines, the human race creates the Eon Squadron, a special unit of hired pilots called Eon Fighters whose task is to embark on extremely dangerous missions to collect essential materials in exchange for large sums of credits. The war is far from over, and today, more than ever, the destiny of the human race depends on these fighters. Eon Fighter. Should have explosions go up. Whoa, my cursor is just flying off into space there. What is happening? Bye bye, cursor. See you later. What is going on? What? Stop. Yeah, that's actually my cursor, too. It's what? If I. This is like a virus, man. <laughs> okay, that didn't fix it. Interpolation. That's a weird one. That's a new one. V-Sync? We don't need V-Sync. Language English, yeah. Is this a bug? Or is this just what the developer thinks is cute? I don't know. I feel like this is a bug. I hope this is a bug. If I restart it, will it fix this? Oh, no, 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 no. Don't have to go through all of this again. Come on, man. Oh, holy shit. This is the same thing I was talking about with the other game. The first game that we played. You have this... This thing that auto-scrolls at the start, and there's no way to, like, skip through it. Oh, wait, nope. Just kidding. But my cursor is still just kind of drifting off into space. Um, that's weird. Is it my controller that's doing that? I don't know what that is. I I don't like that. That's really annoying. If I unplug my controller, will it... Oh, it stopped. Okay, so it was related to my controller. Okay. Um, yeah, it would be cool if there was... I'm guessing there's not, like, much of a dead zone. My controller's kind of old. I also... It's used. I picked it up used, so... I'm guessing there's probably some very minor stick drift to my controller, and I guess there's no, um, there's no dead zone in this game, so because there's just very minor stick drift with my controller, um, it was just, the, the cursor was just flying off into space, so yeah, that sucks. Anyways, uh, I'm just gonna play with the mouse and keyboard. Um, we gotta look through the options. There's not really much here, unfortunately. But I also think it's just, um, just like a 2D game, so maybe that's fine. Let's see what the guide has to say. Use the keys WASD to move, shift to activate turbo, and space for break. Modern controls, go figure. A modern game developer knows how to use modern controls. It's, it's refreshing compared to all the fucking RPG Maker games who just still live in the fucking 90s where they have to use arrow keys for everything and god forbid they think about WASD even though I'm sure a lot of the RPG Maker devs know about WASD. Anyways, get close to the ore to extract resources. When you do, the gathering beam automatically fires. Complete the cargo before the time runs out. You can see the progress in the top right corner. Pay attention to experience orbs, time, or HP bonuses. The experience orbs will allow you to level up and improve your ship and weapons. As time progresses, more and worse enemies 
will come to destroy you. A bonus of time or HP can be the difference to complete the level. Once you complete the cargo, as long as you do it before the time expires and you have eliminated all the remaining enemies, the cargo ship will come. Approach to deliver cargo, recover HP, receive your pay bonuses, and continue the next delivery. Remember to upgrade your ship. This is not an easy job. So this is early access, and I'm actually not a fan of early access. Of all the methods of crowdfunding for games, I do believe early access is the um, better of the choices than rather than like Kickstarter, Indiegogo, or Patreon. You know, like I think at least with early access, you get something immediately. But still, at the same time, you can thank all the yahoos who totally destroyed the reputation of Early Access by um, putting up a very, very early game and never, ever finishing it or never meeting their um, promised delivery date. And not even meeting it by, like, like, not even just missing it by a little bit, but missing it by years and years that I really have very little patience for uh, Early Access games now. Um... I almost completely ignore early access games, even if they look cool, like, wow, that's a cool concept. I don't even bother with caring about them until they are released from early access. I would have never looked at this game had it not been for the fact that the developer, I haven't even started the timer. I'm gonna cut off five minutes from the timer <laughs> because I've just been talking. I would have never even looked at this game had it not been for the fact that the developer obviously sent me a, a code for the, the game. Because I just don't care about early access games. Uh, on that note, with it being early access, um, I really hope that they do change the tutorial because just doing a giant text dump as an option in the main menu kind of sucks. Welcome, pilot. As you know, we have a huge task ahead of us. I will update you on the situation. Needless to say, sectors are extremely dangerous. The chances of success are not encouraging, but if you have been accepted into the Eon squ Squadron, you must certainly be an exceptional pilot and you will be able to handle it. The only way in or out of the sector is on the TQ-25 cargo ship. Once you arrive and complete loading, there will be no room left to bring your ship back, so you will need to scrap it. I know it's a shame, but remember that the resources we extract are infinitely more valuable. When you finish a mission, buy improvements and take a look at the new models we have for sale. Uh, there will surely be one that suits your style more. As you gain experience, you will be able to access other sectors with better pay, but more dangerous. That is all for now. Good luck. So I do... I looked, oh, I didn't even bring up the store page um, before playing the game, but I, I did look at it uh, prior to the stream, and it is a roguelike, which is also another thing not in this game's favor for me, because I'm not only am I not a fan of early access games, but I'm also not a fan of roguelike games either. So I'm going to have a tough time jiving with this game, I think. Let's leave it with default, um, WASD. Um... Looks like infinite space. Is that uh? How do I get out of this menu? That X. Okay. That. All right, that's fine. I guess. Uh, if infinite space is, how do I start? Upgrades. If Infinite Space is another roguelike, then I obviously haven't played it, because like I said, I don't really play roguelikes. I guess it's the only choice I have. It would be nice if it just auto-selected, since it's the only the only choice that I have at the beginning. Um, okay, it's selected. Now what? Sector? Alright. Okay. Simulator. Oh, yeah. You'd be speaking of FTL. Yeah, FTL was the first thing that came to mind when I saw there was a space shooter, but I don't think this is like FTL. Because I think it's kind of like a twin stick shooter. Um, how do I oh, engage? 
So I think it's more like a twin stick shooter, and I don't think FTL was really twin stick shooter y like. Let's see, Imminent Space is a DS RPG game made by Platinum. Oh, wow. Okay, so here's the mine. Yeah, this feels very twin stick shooter y. Level up. Um, not really a fan of this music either. <laughs> the the menu music was not so bad. Oh, is it? Oh, is there? Oh, there is a heat gauge. The menu music was not so bad. This feels like not fitting at all. Pretty cool riff though, I'm not gonna lie, there's a cool little synthy riff going on there. Uh, we'll just go with funny, sure. This is not so difficult right now. But knowing roguelikes, they tend to the difficulty ramps up pretty quick. Complete the loading or the cargo ship will... What? Cooldown sucks, man. I get they don't just want you to spam, but man, reduce weapon cooldown. That's that's the that's the roguelike thing, right? You you start off feeling like everything just sucks, and then you level up, and it's like, wow, everything doesn't suck. But it's it to me, what I don't like about that is that you start off feeling gimped, right? Instead of you, you you feel powerful by feeling like you have full control. So you start off by feeling like you don't have a lot of control, then eventually do gain control, rather than starting off feeling like you do have control and then eventually gaining, be feeling like you're overpowered, right? That's kind of like the, the difference of the dichotomy. Like you have a lot of RPG games where you start off feeling like, oh, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm in control of everything, but I'm not super powerful. But then you level up, you level up, you level up, and you eventually feel like you're just this god. But with a lot of roguelike, it's almost the opposite, where you feel like you're totally gimped, and then you have to level up, level up, level up, and you finally feel like you're in control, right? You don't feel like you're an overpowered god. So this song that's playing now sounds way better, too. It's kind of like, it reminds me of, um... What was it called? It was an old Xbox 360 uh, arcade game. I think it was called like Geometry Dash or something like that. And that feels, I don't know, maybe it's because I have that like memory of whatever that game was that it feels like, because it was also a twin stick shooter, that it feels more appropriate for this kind of game. The weird like hip hop trap kind of thing just doesn't feel like it's a match for this kind of game. Loading on the cargo ship will not arrive. I don't know what that means. Even with reduced cooldown, I I think I've gotten like two reduced cooldowns now, and I still feel like it's totally useless, man. Of 
destroy any remaining enemies for the target. nice if there was like some sort of like waypoint oh wait is there a waypoint oh there is kind of a waypoint it's not very visible but i guess it's not the worst thing once you become aware of it it's totally fine but like wait like if you don't notice it's very easy to miss that uh So if there's no more enemies left, why do you make me wait to deliver the cargo? It sh I feel like it really should just be kind of instant. Like the minute, like if all the enemies are cleared and you touch the cargo ship, I feel like it should be like instant, like level complete. You don't need to wait for me to deliver, unless you have some sort of like twist that's gonna happen while I'm dropping off the payload. Um, some twist happens. That makes that interrupts me from dropping off the payload. Then I guess that makes sense. But otherwise, if there's no twist, well, why make me wait through that? It's like the weapons; they fire automatically. I don't know what any of them do. So. That's a roguelike thing, though, right? You don't. You, it's kind of like learning by experience. You don't get to know what they do. That's another thing that I don't like about it. It's like you just like. I'm not going to... I'm going to give you some options, but I'm not going to tell you what those options are. Just fucking learn. I, I don't like that. Like, tell me what my choices are so I understand them better. So I can make a more informed choice. Is there a boost? There is a boost. So, is there any... Yeah, you some fine. I will admit, I, I'm, I might be sounding pretty negative, but I actually do really enjoy twin stick shooters. I, I th like I mentioned, I think it's Geometry Dash. I can't remember its name. I think it's Geometry Dash. And I really loved that game back on the Xbox 360 arcade. It was one of my favorite games, honestly. Um, and then there's another um, XNA game. I think it was called I Made a Game with Zombies in it. And I fucking love that game. It was also a twin stick shooter. I really like twin stick shooters. They they remind me of a lot of like flash games and stuff. So honestly, it's kind of fun just because twin stick shooters are, are fun. I'm just not a fan of the like, I guess you'd say the meta mechanics that are around the game. The, the roguelike elements. Um, nah, I guess that's really it like elements the the starting off feeling really nerfed and then having to build up to feeling competent um the uh just no explanation of what your choices are you just have to learn through trial This fucking electric thing sucks so bad. Like, it, it has such a short range on it. Like, obviously the optimal strategy is keeping your distance, right? I don't know if maybe in the future 
I'm gonna be like surrounded by a ton of enemies that are close by, but it really feels like the optimal strategy is keeping your distance, so having something so short range just feels so fucking useless, man. I don't see anything else to mine. What do you mean I failed to what? What was I supposed to deliver? Huh? Okay, this is level one, so I'm starting back at the beginning again, right? I don't get it. What did I what did I do wrong? Was that was that drunk me's fault? Was that was that my Was that all on me because I'm I'm fucking drunk? Did I just miss something important? Or did it just not really explain? Projectile damage. I felt like some of those tankier enemies started getting way too tanky. Oh my god, this cooldown sucks so much. See, that's the other thing too, right? Because I, like I was talking about twin stick shooters. Um, the other ones that I was talking about, I made a game with zombies in it and uh, Geometry Dash. Uh, they didn't have a cooldown system. Complete the loading or... Oh, does it want... Do I... What? I don't know what it means by complete the loading. And this fucking cooldown shit sucks so much! Oh my god! Song. Pretty cool. So the first song that we listened to kind of sucked, but some of the rest of the songs in the soundtrack are pretty good. Oh sure. Cool down sucks. Down, please. Uh... Why do I need a time bonus? I don't know what any of this shit means.
no explanation on any of these. I'm gonna go with mines. Maybe I just leave mines everywhere. It does seem like there's a white arrow that points me towards things to mine. tanky. Like, the, the jump from level 1 to level 2 is just nuts. And that's like the whole thing with um, roguelikes, right? Is that, like, you're gonna be grinding the first level over and over again. You really... You, you really learn the game and you really, really... Um, you, you really just get a lucky draw. <laughs> I don't know what add projectile is. I don't know what that means. By, like, how many bullets I shoot out? Wouldn't that be fire rate, though? I don't get it. I don't know. Oh, I see. It is, like, two bullets at once. I guess that's So I do think it would be nice if there was more of an explanation on the HUD, because I can see that there are, like, white arrows that point you towards the mining places, but because no explanation was given about the HUD, I had been totally missing that fact for this whole time. Give me reduce cooldown. All my time playing Warframe has taught me anything. <laughs> uh, adding multi-shot to your, to your weapons is far more valuable than any damage increase. And I'm glad to see that multi-shot is just as powerful and valuable in this game from what I can tell so far. It also kind of sucks that you have to stay in such a small little space in order to mine. I don't know. Uh, it's... Like... I don't know. It, it sucks that you just have to stay in such a small little area. It, it feels like you don't get to enjoy flying around because you have to just constantly do circles in one little area. I feel like, I don't know, maybe not defending the area, but I don't know, maybe, I don't know what the answer is, but just, the circle is so tight, all you can do is just, like, fly in circles. You don't really get to enjoy just moving around in this area and, like, navigating space, you know? There we 
there we go, level two complete. Overheating sucks. into that bullet, that missile. Weapon fire rate, shield recovery speed. Sure kind of a glass cannon right now, I think. But as they say, a be the best defense is good offense. Add projectile. Best defense. kind of weak. I keep hearing them. They're kind of cool, but also kind of weak. I want a little more bass to them. A little boom. Yep. Keep adding projectiles. Multi-shot is always better than flat damage. Genre and understand the shortcomings of the game, but remember the games you are reviewing are the result of a lot of work and effort for some of developers, so you know this constructive criticism is always beneficial. It's very good that you detail what you don't like. The only thing I respectfully suggest is that you treat the content with more respect. Thanks for your peers, just that. Have a great weekend. Yeah, sure, no problem. Lasers. Discharge EMP. Uh, electric discharge kind of sucked last time. I don't know what EMP does. We'll just go with lasers then. To be to be clear, I, I mentioned this before. I don't know if you caught that. You are you are right. I'm being pretty harsh, and that unfortunately tends to happen, so I appreciate you for calling me out when I do that. Um, ooh, that is pretty powerful. We should have done the first time. So, thank you for calling me out when I get too harsh. Um, I do want to say, I'm... Overall, it's pretty fun. I'm not a fan of the genre. But the twin... St twin stick shootery stuff is fun. Once you get the power level there, when you start feeling like you're actually competent at the game, because you've got, you've collected enough power. It does feel good. That's what the, the genre is about, right? You start out feeling like a mook and eventually you get to feel like you're not a mook. 
Company in chat. <laughs> We'll increase weapon range. Yeah, <laughs> that laser thing is like exact, is almost exactly what the, um, the uh, electricity thing did, but it has way more range on it. It's so much better than the electricity thing. The electricity thing is such a waste. And it sucks because there's just no explanation on any of this stuff. The faster I level up, the more powerful I get, right? So, be best defense is good offense. Oh my god! <laughs> Why do the level ups never give me cooldown reduction? Oh my god, I hate dealing with the cooldown! I guess weapon range. I don't know. The starting. See, that's the thing that gets me too, right? Like, the, wep the starting weapon range is pretty short, but it feels right, you know? The cooldown doesn't. It feels like it's way too quick. I don't really know what the money is for either. more experience we'll level up super duper fast now oh my gosh so of course they're gonna throw a bunch of enemies at me on oh, cooldown Everything at me, huh? Add a projectile.
Oh, does you... You get full health when you level up, too. Oh, no. Oh, no, that means leveling up is an exploit now. <laughs> Ah, uh, reduce weapon cooldown. Finally, I get one. Oh my god. I'm on level five, and I this is like the second one I've gotten. Leveling up apparently just fully restores my health, and obviously I want to level up as often as possible to make sure I'm constantly topping off my health. A projectile. So the one thing is, like, I guess it's nice to constantly get levels, but you start to kind of get numb to it after a certain point. I don't know, I kind of feel like levels should be less frequent, but more meaningful. The nice thing about multi-shot too, with such a large target, is that means pretty much all of my shots are going to go into this target and just chew down their health. My health is getting chewed down too. Cooldown, man. Thank you for giving me a reduced weapon cooldown. Jesus. accidentally just like flew into that bullet it's, it you kind of there's like you 
don't exactly turn on a dime. It's not like asteroids where, like, your ship just basically turns in place. Which makes it kind of difficult to maneuver. I assume, maybe, that one of the other ships might change that. That might be ship-specific behavior. But just sort of sucks. I guess it falls right in line, again, with the genre where you feel just underpowered and you build up to feeling capable. So, of course, that means feeling like you don't have full control <laughs> at the start of the game, which I just don't jive with. You should feel like you're always in control of your, your uh, character, your player. See, that's, and yeah, that's kind of the thing I just, I don't like about roguelikes. I don't find that fun. And also, I don't find it fun that you're going to feel underpowered unless you, it's not just about finding a broken combo. It's about having the chance to find a broken combo because a lot of it's left up to luck, right? Wow, that's one sector. That was pretty long. I'll give him credit on that, actually. Although, I will say... Uh, I will say, um, it, it sucks that, like, if you die on the boss there, there's five stages, that was pretty long, and I personally, if I had died on that boss and would have to redo the whole sector, that would suck so bad. Yeah... Uh, all right, let me see what the next, where'd my chat go? I just, out of curiosity, let's see what, uh, what do we have for upgrades? Do I have perk points? Okay, so you have money. So do you spend the money on ships? Cost, yeah, cost 10,000. It would be nice if that cost was like, I don't know, stood out way more. It could be like in gold letters with like a, a bounding box around it like this. In fact, actually, you know what? I would just put the price next to the buy. Just put it like buy dash $10,000. So that way it's clearly visible. I don't want to have to search through these pages to, through, through all this information just to see the, the price. Because as, as a person who's looking through these stuff, first I want to see... Before I even look at the stats, I want to see how much I'm going to have to spend. So, being able to get that information, the price, at like a quick glance before even looking at anything else, I think is far more important. Base HP, 400 points. Base shield, 600 points. What does this start out? So, it's like a, a very minor upgrade. Okay, so yeah, I was right. Rotation angle. So that's exactly what I was talking about. Except this one has an even tighter turning radius. So that's, that's funny. So the first ship that you buy really only feels like it has a very minor negligible upgrade over your starting ship. I mean, just looking at stats. It's like, so like, let's do some quick math. So what's 10% of uh, 500? So that, that's 50, right? So, I'm dumb at math. I want. I have to like confirm my. So 500 times. Did I hit point? Oh, that's divide. No, 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 no. 500 times 0.5. Sorry, that was wrong. <laughs> that was drunk, Nolan. 500 <laughs> times 0.1 is 50. Yeah, I was right. Okay. So I can guess him, guessing myself. So, like, so you get a 10% increase whenever you level up for your base shield. So basically, two level ups, as long as you happen to get shield upgrades there, 
and you're already at the same base shield as this ship. So, like, I feel like this is this second ship is sort of a bad value, unless there's some sort of... Uh, I guess it does have passives here. What is the passives? Unfortunately, none of these mean anything to me. I also think there's a typo there. Recollection rate. Shouldn't that be with two scenes? Can I double check that real fast? Yeah, it should be with two, two, sorry, I said two Cs. I meant two Ls. It should be with two Ls. Anyways, um, but I don't know what any of that means. Angle, this one's 180 degrees compared to 240, 13,000. I can actually afford that. Base HP is a lot less. Go figure. Top speed is faster. I didn't see any value in speed. Maybe that comes in in later sectors, but to me, speed seemed like one of the least important aspects of a ship. Acceleration. 0% to 100% in 0.2 seconds. Like, it sounds nice to be able to go fast. Like, I would, I think it would be more fun to play faster, but it wouldn't be valuable, right? It wouldn't be $13,000 valuable. So, none of these perks have, like, a description. There we go. It'd be nice if it was hover over in that case. Retribution resource, payment for each unit of resource. I, I just, like, that doesn't mean anything. Oh, look, you can even increase your base speed just with a perk. Oh, cool, you can even increase cooldown rate. Oh, thank god. I'll just... <laughs> Spend all my money on that. Please, for the love of God, remove cooldown. It's the worst thing. I hate cooldown so much. So, perks. Is that what I would have gotten in upgrades? I guess this is just a pass. Oh, here are the perks. But, oh, uh, I don't know. I gotta pee again. Let me just see what the new sector is like, and then we're gonna close out of this game and uh, move on to the last game. How much does it differ in sector two? Can you get hurt by running into those? Uh, of course, I can't even turn into them. Oh my god, the turn. Seems like they slow me down. That's kind of a but I guess thanks for uh, like adding some variety in there. Oh, I got all that cooldown and it still feels so useless. Our projectiles, always projectiles. At least it doesn't make me have to wait for the whole cooldown meter to completely discharge if I max out the heat. Too many games do that and makes cooldown even worse. Cooldown, please. <laughs> One of the things I hate the most in games, by the way, is also like when it comes to first-person shooters. I, I hate reloading when it's like if it's if there's a reason like it's supposed to be like a simulation kind of game, then of course it makes sense. But if you're like an arcadey kind of fast-paced shooter, it always feels so weird to have reload in there. It feels like there's no it serves no purpose. 
other than just to say, hey, stop playing the game for a little bit. Add projectile. <laughs> like cooldowns and reloads are like the fun police. It's kind of like they have to come in Like right when you start having the most fun they come in and are like whoa 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 there You're having a little bit too much fun. You got it. You're gonna have to dial it back. Sorry. Sorry there, buddy You're, you're too much fun So far, other than the, like, meteorites that, like, slow you down, there doesn't feel like too much of a change over the previous level. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, necessarily. Like, the meteorites are kind of... kind of stupid. <laughs> like, like I said, it's nice that they're mixing it up. It's not just another empty field for you to run around in. But I don't know how I feel about the meteorites. I don't know if that's the right solution to this problem. And then other than other than that for mixing it up, there, there's not really like much else to it. It's like we put some meteorites in and mix it up, but the like the difficulty curve seems to be more more or less the same as the previous level. The enemies seem to be about the same. So all it is is it's exactly the same, but we threw meteorites in. weapon range really felt useful was during the boss, which I guess is important. I'm not going to downplay that too much, but it kind of sucks that it's like weapon range really doesn't feel very valuable except for one very specific scenario. So it's kind of like, why would I spend one of my upgrades on something that doesn't come until the very end? Yeah, okay. I'm I'm gonna finish with this game because I've given it a lot of extra time. He, I don't know if the dev is still around or if he got angry with me because I was too harsh on the game. Here's the thing. Despite me being pretty brutal with my criticisms on this, I don't hate the game, right? Like, don't misunderstand me as hating the game. I normally am happy, I'm relieved when the timer hits 45 minutes, or however much time I've given the game. Once it hits that time, I am ready to peace out. So, first of all, the fact that I wanted to give your game more time after that, first of all, I hope that speaks volumes, that I do find your game fun. I do find it fun. There's just some problems that I personally find it difficult to jive with. And if I were the dev of this game, I would try to get some more beta testers to see if they also feel similarly. And if they do, then maybe I would reconsider some of my systems. 
So, anyways, um, wh what do we give this for for score? Uh, <laughs> for po for polish, polish has become a really difficult one to earn. I'm also really thinking, right? Dun Dungeon Rummage is the only one with a one on polish, and I'm really considering actually taking that away because polish has been really difficult to earn. I feel like this game doesn't get it but it's probably closer than a lot of the other games because it didn't necessarily feel buggy although i guess there was that um bug with the controller at the start but there are some balancing things that i personally don't jive with which makes it hard for me to want to give polish um, and also the one that I think a lot of people can agree on, like the balancing thing might be pretty subjective here. However, the fact that it is in early access, um, it's like the one reason, like one of the big reasons why I can't say it's polished, you know, um, it feels like what is there for an early access game would actually be a pretty okay arcade game. And maybe it's pretty bold of me to say, but I feel like almost like maybe patching some stuff, polishing some stuff, balancing some stuff. But what's there is, I, I don't know, I would sell it for cheap. I don't know. That's, I would pick it up for cheap. It would be a fun just like distraction for 40 minutes, an hour. But I don't know if I would be really looking for like a really deep, fulfilling kind of game out of that you know that that's just me personally so it's almost feels i guess what i'm saying is like it feels like there's not much of a reason for it to be in early access which i guess you could take that as a compliment maybe that means it's it's it feels like compared to a lot of early access games you didn't release it too early you know from what i played granted it's only been 45 minutes maybe it's missing a lot of those other sectors or something i don't know but either way, I'm going to stick with a zero on the polish. Accessibility, it did provide some other different controls, which is nice, plus controller support. Um, it would have been nice to see some more menu options and rebindable keys. I didn't see any rebindable keys, but at least they provided different control schemes, which is better than nothing. If it was an RPG Maker game, you would get a one. <laughs> Do I give you a one for for that when you're not an RPG Maker game? I'm going to go ahead and say yeah. Clarity. I don't think it had the clarity just because there's a lot of things that I just... Yeah, yeah. There's definitely a lot of things are coming to mind that I just didn't understand what it meant. There is no explanation on upgrades, what the, what purpose they served. Um, the tutorial is a text dump that you get from the main menu. Um, there's no explanation on your main HUD when you're actually in game. Um, there's, there's so much missing information that clarity is definitely going to be a zero. Balance. I know this one's going to be really subjective. I'm going to say no on balance because it felt like, and balance may completely be up to the fact that just not enough information is given to the player. But, like, my first death, I felt like it was unfair that I died, right? Which makes it feel like that means it's not balanced. I felt like I died because I got a shitty upgrade. I didn't know what to do. It, it, I don't find that fun, and that doesn't feel fair, so it feels unbalanced as a result. It also felt like the difficulty, as a result of likely not having enough information, it felt like the difficulty ramped up way too much between level 1 and level 2. So, yeah. And a unique identity... Uh, it just felt like generic space twin stick shooter, which I feel like there's that's a dime a dozen, is the thing. Like... Asteroids is the original twin stick shooter and it was a space shooter. 
So, I don't know. I, I think it's a real uphill battle on your identity there. So, yeah, I don't know, man. It's pretty rough when we look at the score here. At a 2 for a commercial game, that's not good. But to, I guess to be fair on that 2, uh, a couple of those, or at least balance is definitely very subjective there. Um, so it could be a three, but even still, the way my scoring system works is you want a five or a six. So even if it was a three, it's still not good enough, in my opinion, to be a commercial game. Um... So yeah, well that sucks, but I do appreciate it, Dev, if you are still around or not. I do appreciate you giving me the key. I may potentially play more. I, like I said, I had fun with it. I did have fun with it. Um, unlike some of the other games, when the timer ran out, I wasn't eager to just close out the game and move on. I actually wanted to play more. There's only been one other game that I think I've actually played on these streams that I did that with, and... I think you can guess which one that was. So, um, so anyways, uh, not bad. Um, despite it only having a two, it was pretty fun. So, uh, we have one more game. It's pretty late, but I guess we'll play it. Um, I gotta pee again, though, go figure. Um, we listened to this song twice now, so let's not listen to that song again. Let's do, um, this one. I'll be right back. that um, Vampire Survivors is, is actually quite popular right now, and it's a twin-stick roguelike shooter, isn't it? I haven't played it. I had a friend who had been playing it. He wanted me to play it with him, too. But um, the only reason why I bring that up is because um, it really puts that dev in really quite a difficult position. Um, bullet hell pixel it doesn't say if it's twin stick shooter but I th think it is and in that case it, like vampire survivors is like like way up there right like it's really popular and um 
so basically, you're kind of competing with uh, people's attention from Vampire Survivors. And I think it's going to be tough to take them away from this game to play your game. Unless you got some sort of really interesting hook. So that really kind of go comes back to the uh, unique identity part of Pack Butt, Where it's like, I think the dime a dozen sci-fi twin stick shooters is really not going to be enough to, um, to, to sell, you know? Um, so I guess it's just sort of unfortunate timing because basically you're, because this genre is becoming really popular, there's another game that kind of released with a similar thing, like Vampire Survivors is like the 2D version, and then there's like a, a, a new game that just released not too long ago that is basically Vampire Survivors, but in 3D. And it's also doing pretty, where, pretty well um, with its popularity. Unfortunately, it would have been in the oh, new releases, yeah. Do we have it here? What is it called, man? What is it called? Popular new releases. Soulstone. Soulstone Survivors. God. <laughs> what is with indie devs and like... Vampire Survivors, Soulstone Survivors, it's like... Anytime there's like a cool idea, they... They basically just copy. I... Sorry, this is such a pet peeve. Like, it's such a personal pet peeve of mine. I was watching... Um... Fuck, I gotta bring him up. Where... Where's... Where was my YouTube page? Where's my YouTube page, man? Here. Um, Iron Pineapple Steam Dumpster Diving. It literally just releases today, right? So this this is like his his thing, right? He just reviews. Um, he just reviews Souls like games, and it's so funny the number of games that just like. A soul slick is it a doesn't feel like there's a, an original thought in their empty fucking head of theirs. Where, <laughs> when they want to make a souls like game, they they have to imitate everything from the art direction to everything down to the simplest fucking thing of just like the dim background with the bold text that says you died or whatever and fortunately he starts off in this video he starts off with a good a, a good example of not that a, a game that actually feels like the developer has an original idea but so many of the games in here just do that and i it, it it's such a pet peeve of mine but it's just like at what point is it an homage? At what point does an homage just become literally straight up copying something? How can people accept this shit? Like, I, I don't care that it's a Souls like, like that's a, the whole genre. That's totally fine. Like I said, this first game that he shows off actually feels like it is a Souls like, but it has a unique idea. It's not just trying to be Dark Souls. It's trying to be its own fucking thing. But there are so many people who are like, Oh, it's a Souls-like. That means I need to do everything exactly what Dark Souls did. <laughs> Anyways. Sorry, that was a whole side tangent. Soul Survivors, which has to have survivors in its name because it's just copying Vampire Survivors. And that's the popular thing right now. Anyways, this one just released... It's also very popular. Vampire Survivors is there. Both of these are twin stick roguelike shooters. So it's kind of like Eon Fighter is in a very unfortunate position where it's doing what these other two popular games are doing, but not as well. Anyways, let's wrap up for tonight. Let's finish the last game on the list. Um... And that's going to be not Doug Dog, <laughs> Fifth Era. Here we go. So Fifth Era is also another demo game. 
This was suggested by one of the people in my Discord group. Uh, the only reason why he suggested it is because he said his computer can't handle playing it. That's all. Um, so he wanted to know if my computer can get a stable frame rate while playing this game. It looks like there's been a lot of custom art uh, done, a lot of custom work done. Uh, it is an RPG Maker game, though. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. It does look pretty impressive. Looks like it's got a lot of style. It's got a nice store page. It looks like it's very professional, very well put together. So um, let's see what this is about. I don't really know a lot about it. Looks like it's getting a lot of buzz, though. Oh, there's there's Michael Primo right there. Um, he's the he's the guy who recommended that I try this game. Uh, I recognize some of. I recognize this avatar from the RPG Maker forums. It's weird seeing RPG Maker forums user not on the RPG Maker forum. So I know you. <laughs> All right, back to my folder of games here, and we're gonna play Fifth Era. I'm gonna set it to 35 minutes though, and we're gonna start the timer. And we're going to launch the game. It is a... I don't know. They have updated NWJS, and therefore the icon for the uh, game is... Uh, or the EXE is not the default one. Let's see, can I tell? Wait, before it goes into it, before it goes... Wait, 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 wait. Before it goes into it, I I'm going to see if I can't find out for myself. What plugins are they using? Okay, they're using Visual Stella, so it's MZ. All right, we figured it out. <laughs> oh no, that noise filter is going to be terrible for my bit rate. Oh no, that's going to destroy my bitrate. Can I turn that off? What? What? Oh, it's W? Stretch screen? Oh, okay. Oh no, there's no way to turn off the noise filter. I hope that's not on during the whole game. Because then my stream is going to look like garbage. Battle animations. We're going to turn up the battle speed. Battle camera movements, fine. Command, remember. I can't believe for how professional the game... Oh man. For all the glitz and glamour of the of the starting of the store page, uh, they do this where you know they slam the sliders way down so it doesn't blow out people's eardrums. Appreciated. I don't get me wrong. It's um, thank you for not blowing my eardrums out. The thing is, is that it just looks really unprofessional. I've talked about this before. It looks like you don't know how to mix your volume, so all you do is just slam all the sliders down. The other thing, I'm, that's a minor thing. The other thing I'm going to say that it's not so minor is that there's no keyboard config. I cannot believe that such a professional looking game doesn't offer WASD controls. And it's nuts. There goes my bitrate. Bye bye bitrate. Because there's a stupid noise filter. Choose the game mode you want to experience. Classic mode, the default game experience. Explore the world, find items and gear, fight mighty foes, and level up. This mode is for RPG fans who will enjoy the game's challenge as well as the narrative. Story mode, designed for the players that want to focus on the story and characters of the fifth era. Battles with common enemies are removed and the player will fight only the forced battles such as bosses. These battles will be less challenging than other game modes and your party level will be adjusted as the story progresses. It's sort of nuts. I guess it's appreciated. It's sort of weird to put so much development focus on implementing different modes when you're still in a demo stage. I mean, I don't know what's going on behind the scenes, so 
maybe this was just easy to implement, quick and easy to implement. But I don't know. I personally wouldn't want to start implementing different modes in my game until near the end. I mean, then again, my game's also kind of designed to have modes from the beginning just because of my options menu, but that's sort of different, right? So, like, I don't want to remove the regular fights. This is kind of annoying, right? There's not really, like, a regular game journalist difficulty. You have classic mode where you have to fight everything and the difficulty is normal. And then you have story mode where it just removes a bunch of fights. It's like, what if I don't want to remove all those fights, but I still want an easier time, right? So, cause like I, oh well, I'll just go classic mode, whatever. Oh, and then there's more difficulties, what? That's weird. Why would you have... Why would you have different modes and then different difficulties? It, it, uh... You can choose between five different difficulty settings to customize your experience. Novice and easy enemies will have lower parameters, not available in challenge mode. Hard expert enemies will have higher parameters. Normal setting represents... Okay, so... All right, good. This is exactly what I was talking about just a moment ago. Um... I want game journalist difficulty, so I have the same number of encounters, but uh, it's easier, hopefully. Uh, move characters with... Yeah, 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 yeah. Alternatively, you can use the mouse, interact... Okay, yeah. All this style and no rebindable keys, no WASD. It's nuts. Year 2167, Helgon Space Colony, Acropolis, Light, whatever, okay, it went by too fast. Stop right there, don't move. It is, it's here, can't you feel it? Turn around on your knees, hands up where I can see them. It has been so, so long. What are you? Comply or we'll open fire. Finally. I can finally feel it. Stop. A shimmer in the dark. It's a good intro, I guess. I mean, that was all right, and then kind of ruined it. Yeah, I know it was kind of fucked up. You don't need to tell me, game. I we we watched it happen. Doctor, we tried stopping him, but where is he? He jumped. He jumped from the terrace? But our patients don't have zero-G devices. Well, in that case, he's dead now, Doc, and let's hope he didn't drop on anyone. Don't you think we should try to recover the body? He's not in sight. That means he could have crashed into any sector of the city. We must warn our agents and cooperate with the police. Let's start from the base. That's most likely... That's the most likely site. Any team down in the junkyard? Edric is out on patrol, Captain. Hmm. Edric, do you read me? Over. Loud and clear, Captain. Over. Edric, where the fuck are you? Oh, man. This is going to be one of those games where they just, like, throw swear words into the dialogue because that sounds edgy and mature. I've talked about this before. I don't have a problem with swear words. I swear all the time. It's just that when it comes to writing, it sounds really amateurish when you just throw fucks in there where it doesn't feel like it means anything. 
I don't know, man. It it just it it sounds amateurish when it comes to writing. And the fact that they had to explain like that that was fucked up right after the guy jumped, like it, it feels sort of amateurly written too, because it's like they don't trust the the reader, the player, to to realize that the guy killed himself, so they have to tell you that he was fucked up. <laughs> Come on, why don't you peek out of your hole, you bastards? Captain, the situation here is a bit hot, over. You need reinforcements, over? I can handle this, sir. It's the same old gang of erudite smugglers. Boy, they're angry this time. Captain, I'm gonna have to call you back on this line once the situation is under control, over and out. All right, guys, cover your ears. What? Edric, I can't hear you. Take this, you filthy rats. The art is nice. The pixel art is good. The writing is kind of the weak. The best is to put the swear words in the character's name. as <laughs> plain. <laughs> uh, if only I could name... If only I could name my player character. Are you okay, Sansone? What kind of fucking name is that? You hurt? I'm fine, thank you. Hey, Nico, are you alright? Okay, is this me being, like, culturally unaware? Hang on, let's go, let's look up stuff. Bust open, duck, duck, go. Sansone. There is a Sansone auto group. And Sansone AC. There's Sansone Italian food. They They were Italian. So maybe it's an uh, Italian name. That's me being a, a, an illiterate, uncultured bastard. All right, fair enough. Sansone's just sort of a weird name, but all right. It's because I'm uncultured that it, that's weird. Japanese names were weird to me when I first moved here, so it, it's all right. No, I think I'm fine. Stay sharp. There's probably more of them around. Do you have any weapons on you? Yeah, my rifle. It's not the first time we have to deal with the helm. I Here, boy, a gun is better than nothing. Thanks, sir. But I've never shot anyone before. I'll do my best. Don't worry, me and Sansone will be watching your back. It's gonna be all right. Hey, you, speak of the devil. You over there, what are you doing down here? Oh, give me a break. We're just doing our jobs. You guys are the intruders. If you guys turn around and run, we'll pretend we didn't see you. Wait, the rim is and and enforcer here. Not sure I could make the difference between male and female Japanese. There's not really. There's like there are some female exclusive names in Japan, but it's really not a thing here. Um like the it's not very common uh i think probably the most common thing like for a boy is ske Ryonosuke or uh why is that the only one that comes to mind Ryonosuke, sanosuke like those are always boys ske it's always boys. I don't know if girls really has a rule. And by the way, not every boy has to be named something something Ske. It, it, they could just have fairly basic names. In fact, actually the Ske name, it's not as common as anime would make you believe. Um, it's actually kind of rare. I, I've, I've met a few Skes here, but uh, still not very common. Uh, wait, the... Yeah, okay, uh, sorry. Uh, I was answering your question, but, uh, yeah, this... I've brought this up before, too. Um, I don't like it when games or me any sort of media does this. Um, they, like, they don't really introduce you to the world. Like, I don't know what a 
Remy's is. Here's the thing, right? Like, I get it. There, there's you have two evils to choose from when you want to introduce your world. You can either use very ham-fisted um, and kind of awkward, stilted dialogue to explain something. It's going to sound unnatural, but at least the reader, the player, whatever, knows what you're talking about. Or the other option, as an amateur writer, is to just act like the player is already part of the world and should already know this. The problem is what winds up happening is you alienate them because you don't give them a chance to read this. They feel like they have to read a fucking, you know, Wikipedia article to understand what's going on. Um, yeah. We'll see if they explain what Remis is. So, I again, I talked about this before. In my own book, I had a lot of, like, um... Why is the word not, not, not coming to mind? Oh, I just realized. I totally forgot this. How did I forget this? The whole stream. Oh, you can't even really see it. I'm, I'm blocking it. I have Christmas lights on my chair. <laughs> How did I forget that the whole stream? Oh my god! Anyways! Uh, once again, I talked about this before. I had a lot of, um... Abbreviations for stuff. But I, I knew, like, people wouldn't know what that means. So the way I handled this, and I'm not saying I, I... In fact, my book has a lot of flaws. Please don't... Please... My book is not good. Um... Please read it, but also please totally understand, it's not a good book. I do think, however, my way of introducing stuff, despite all the plot holes and flaws with that book, um, the way that I introduced all of these like abbreviations and all the sci-fi stuff is I think I handled it pretty well. And basically, I would, first of all, for the abbreviations, I would always have the name be addressed closely between the abbreviation and the full name. So, for example, totally, totally super original TM name, Galactic Imperial Empire, was always shortened to G-I-E in my, in my book, right? And so, when I first introduced them, I would have both the full name, Galactic Imperial Empire, and the abbreviation G-I-E near each other when they're first brought up. I, if I also remember correctly, I always brought up the full name first, before showing the abbreviation. So that way readers would know. And as it went on, like at the start of the book, I would kind of interchangeably use Galactic Imperial Empire and GIE like back and forth to kind of constantly remind readers like that's what GIE means. It means Galactic Imperial Empire. But as the book progressed, I started dropping the use of the full word Galactic Imperial Empire and I just started relying on GIE because I assumed by, you know, midway through the book after constantly switching out between those two Galactic Imperial Empire and GIE that at that point midway through the book the readers would know what that means. Again, I'm not I'm not a professional writer. My book has a lot of flaws with it, but I do feel like that was one thing that I did actually do well in my very terrible book. And I really don't like it when games or other books or movies just do what's happening here. Where they've dumped me into this sci-fi world and have given no explanation of what any of this is. Um, is one, one guy all it takes for you to shit your pants, you spineless worm. You'll curse the day you've crossed the helm. my instructions boy we'll get through this okay i can do this this is the combat screen your team is on the right side while the enemies can be found on the left side of the screen your goal is to defeat your enemies by bringing their health to zero you lose if the enemies defeat the team this is actually a pretty nice tutorial they even highlight different sections of the, of the screen on the lower part of the screen you can see the party's hp and ap the first one indicates your character's health, while the others are the ability points needed to use the skill. It is unfortunate that it does seem like it's just a text dump. It doesn't give you a chance to like... Well, let's see, let's see, hang on. You can see the available commands on the lower left corner of the screen. Attack is offensive command and allows you to deal damage to an enemy. The dealt damage changes based on the attacker's strength and the defender's defense. 
guard is a defensive command. So yeah, as I was just, as I interrupted myself. So yeah, it, it's kind of a shame that this just seems like a text dump. They went through all the effort of like highlighting different sections, but they don't really give you a chance to like learn things one at a time. Instead, it's just going to give you, it's going to feed you all the information at once and just hope that you remember it all. Once you choose an action for each of your characters, the turn will start. The turn order is determined by characters and enemies. The higher the agility, the sooner you'll act. Right, no WASD. No skills. So I, I guess that's good, but that also means we're going to start off with just attack, 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 attack. But, I mean, it reduces the complexity, so it means that tutorial that I was just talking about um, means you don't really have to remember a lot. They're tougher than they look. Come on, Samson, focus. Your character comes with a set of skills. Oh, okay, alright, alright, cool. These skills have different and useful effects, but you'll need to spend some ability points to use them. Some skills can be fast or slow. The fast skill will anticipate a character's actions, while a slow one will delay it. Use your skill in a tactical way to change the flow of combat. Your enemies will have fast and slow skills too. These skills can be recognized by their icons. Okay, cool. So they did break it down. All right, nice. So I take back everything I just said. <laughs> They did break down the, the combat tutorial into different parts, giving you a chance to experience the individual parts before moving you on to the next bit. Take the gloves off. Some enemies can be weak to certain elements. A weak enemy suffers additional damage if hit by the correct element. If you see a question icon below the enemy, it means that the enemy is weak to one or more elements. Once you discover its weakness, the icon will be replaced by the corresponding element icon. Try Edric's flamethrower to dispose your enemies dispose of your enemies quickly. Stupid sons of a... Excuse me for a second, I need to call my captain. Hey, Nico! Nico! Mr. Mauser, sir, I... Call me Sansone. Look, I know I've got you into some big trouble, but we need to keep focused now. When I took up this job, no one warned me that I'd have to use weapons. I don't want to kill anyone, Sansone. Just stick close to me, we'll get through this. What do these people want? The only thing the junkyard's got to offer, iridite. Every now and then, some men from the helm show up to steal some minerals from the mines. They probably trade it in the upper levels of the city. So it's kind of funny, right? Like, if you think of a story like a game, you wouldn't... They know not to introduce mechanics too quickly, right? They managed to break down all of their combat system into... Uh, they managed to, to break their combat system down into each individual part and explain each one over time to give a chance for the player to familiarize themselves with it. So if you think of a story the same way as a game, you need to get your readers familiar with your world. So, ideally, you wouldn't just dump a bunch of lore on your reader and expect them to understand it. Instead, you'd want to break it down into parts. So it's kind of funny that somehow they were able to grasp that concept of breaking things down into parts 
for the game mechanics side, but they weren't able to grasp that part when it came to the storytelling side. See, I don't think I put a single swear word in my translation. I wonder what the Italian original looks like. So do you speak Italian? Is that what your language is? Now, I thought we went over this, though. I thought you said you do speak French, you're just not from France. I don't even know, man. You, are you keeping this a mystery on purpose? The very fact that Helgon exists should answer your question, boy. Now, okay. Just as I was saying, the... They don't take time to explain stuff. So, like, I think the main character was just asking questions about the world, which is perfect. That's a perfect chance. The, there is a great... This is a great time for a believable scenario where you can actually, like, give an explanation for stuff without it feeling ham -fisted. A character in the world isn't familiar, and neither is the player. So now we can explain to the character while at the same time explaining to the player about this world. And they shut that down. They shut it down. This is the perfect chance to teach the player more about the world when the main character asked about it. And instead of actually teaching the, the character and by association, the player about the world, instead they shut it down by saying the fact that Helgun exists should answer your question. What is Helgun? <laughs> right? So you shut it down by adding more stuff in here. I don't know what that is. He doesn't know what that is. I mean, unless there's an explanation in the next slide, which can happen. Maybe I'll push enter and then there's going to be an explanation there. But I have a feeling it's not going to be there because this game just, they don't want to explain stuff to you. Now, as if the helm weren't enough, there's another reason the captain contacted me. Another reason? Looks like some weirdo jumped off the Acropolis level without his zero G. As far as we know, he could have smashed to the ground in any level of the city. But you said he jumped? Why would he do that? Hell if I know, all I have is a description. Man in his 30s, white, pale, complexion, tattooed body, white hair. He was being kept in an asylum in Halo Beta. I played that. <laughs> I'm, to I'm told he killed three attendants during his escape. Now, the only one he'll bother will be the poor bastard that has to clean up the mess and pick up the pieces. Let's resume the patrol. There might be other helm guys to take care of. Keep a sharp lookout. Save points. Yeah, okay. One reason why I wanted to play this, like I said, uh, one of my Discord users said that they got pretty poor performance with this game. So far, I'm getting pretty stable frame rate, though. Better not go that way. Alright, right on. Been knocked out by a stun grenade. Won't bother us anymore. Sure. Bastard smuggling iridite for easy money. Life's worth nothing to them, not even their own. Oh no, you, what the? Monsters, all of you. Wait, monsters? Is this how you keep the peace, Reynolds? Right, whatever. You're gonna pay for this. Persona 5 doesn't make anything to go on. What do you mean by that? Bad timing, huh? Oh no, Edric, it's just a flesh wound. You can take care of it before it gets worse. Some skills may inflict status effects or can have debilitating effects. 
that can reduce target's parameters. Edric has been wounded from a stab. He'll lose health points each turn. You can remove the status effect by using an item in your inventory. You'll be fine. really a fan of the music. It's like well produced, but it really doesn't feel like it has much of a life to it. it I wonder if it's just an asset pack. I'm glad they're at least consistent with the guitar. Kind of keeps the theme consistent. This doesn't really speak to me as a guitar kind of game is the thing though. It's kind of like a butt rock kind of thing, and this isn't a butt rock kind of game. Uh, he said monsters, but they were the ones attacking us. Something's off, I really have a bad feeling about this whole thing. Yeah, me too. I'll go ahead and check the area. You two stay there and catch some breath. Alright, don't get too far from me, Nico. Think about it. We got close to death twice already, and it's only been two hours. What I meant is that this translation reminded me of the one of Dungeon of whatever the fuck that is, where the original French version is very inventive with its swear words while the English one is full of fuck. <laughs> right on. The asterisks are in the game. Oh, I think you mean the asterisks are not in the game. It's you adding the censorship. You don't have to censor yourself, man. I, I, I said I don't have a problem with swear words. I don't want you I don't want that to be your takeaway. I am not that sensitive to swear words. It's not that I have a problem with swear words. It's that in fact you can have swear words in in your in your game, but there's gotta be a purpose for their use. Just throwing a swear word in because it's adult. It's not you. Oh, did it censor it? Really? Can, what if I type fuck? It seems fine. <laughs> Think about it, we got close to death twice already and it's only been two hours. Two hours? Oh, shit. Is something wrong? No, don't worry about it. I just forgot to... Please don't take off now. Please don't take off. Um, hey, Dad. Hey, Butterfly. Have you taken off yet? Oh. Hey, Dad. Hey, Butterfly. Have you taken off yet? That's weird that it repeated the same dialogue. I just walked on board, Dad. So far, so good. What's with the tone? You nervous? Annika? No, I mean, yes, I'm just so excited. Ah, uh, don't worry, everything's gonna go just fine. Finally a member of the family's setting foot on Earth. Listen to me, take all the pics you can and behave. Of course I'll be good, Dad. How's your mother? Did she take her meds? Yeah, yeah, everything's okay. I stopped by the pharmacy before going up to the Acropolis. What about Ariel? I know he can be a little brad, but you're a big sister and exercise judgment since you have more of it, am I right? Precisely. I know, Dad, I know. It's just that, oh, never mind, I gotta go now. Enjoy your trip and have fun. Call your mom when you land. All right, love you. Bye, butterfly. Me too, Dad. Have a nice day at work. Ooh, don't worry about our old super brad. We should I talk about him. Time to enjoy my vacation. Oh, am I playing this? Oh, I guess I'm playing this. Okay.
comfortable. How nice. Oh yeah, we're taking off. It's weird that the game feels... Like, it's so necessary to explain everything. Wow, that's wonderful. <laughs> like, what was the point of that dialogue? What's your daughter flying to Earth for? She just finished high school. She's always wanted to see Earth before college, so she's on vacation there. Wow, I never thought I, they'd pay this well down there. Down here at the mine, tickets for interplanetary travel aren't that accessible, right? I told her I'd pay for her ticket, but she wanted to do it all by herself. She's been saving for this trip for years. That's some determination. What about you, son? Can I just say I'm not... I'm not attached to this like i just really don't care it feels like this is dialogue to waste time right like it's, <laughs> don't care if it has some sort of meaning later in the story cool you haven't gotten me to feel attached to the character the writing in this game has just felt so really amateurish which is weird like uh, I should point this out again, since I've been pretty negative, as I usually am. The art is good. The sprite work is good. The whole art direction stuff, like, looks nice. So, yeah. I'm done with this game. I'm sorry. I'm not... I'm not feeling it. I'm really not. Is it me? Am I too much of a cynical asshole? I've been an asshole all day, right? Am I the problem? <laughs> uh, let's do the, the score. Can't just rush out of this stream without doing a score like I did last time. Feel bad, because uh, the, the guy who wanted me to do the Oni Cell Sword, I had the P so bad that I just ended stream and I totally forgot to rate, give him his rating on the stream itself. Anyways. Polish. I am too much of an asshole. <laughs> or I am the problem. <laughs> All right, so you you tell me what were your thoughts on that game? What were your feelings? I don't know how I feel about like I kind of feel like I might almost kind of want to give that game polish. That's what happens when you stream 4 hours. Stream 4 games in 4 hours. See, like, I kind of... So, here's the thing, right? Like, I can be as negative as I want during the actual gameplay section. But at the end of the day, the the score... The way that the score system is set up, I, I do think it's fairly objective. For all my criticisms of writing and stuff, like, there's nowhere in here that I can grade writing, right? So, that's not going to detract from it. So, even if I don't jive with the writing... That's not going to detract from their score. 30 minutes is short. Yeah, it was pretty short for that game. I It was short for that game, but it was really not engrossing me at all. Because, as I was saying with the writing, right? Like, the start... When it comes to gameplay... See, here's, here's the problem, right? Let's break this down. Here's the problem. There are two ways you're going to catch players' attention, I think. There might be more. But in in this for this game, there's two ways they could catch the player's attention. They could either catch the player's attention with combat, with game mechanics, or they can catch the player's attention with story. And I feel like they decided to go they decided to go the story route. They focused way more on story. However, the story was not interesting. 
they didn't get things going quick enough to hook my interest. Where is the... Oh, gosh. I don't know if I can find this. I'm going to have to, like, draw it from hand. What is it? Um, George Lucas's... Um, graph? Um, it's okay to be what you are. There's this... God, I don't know what to search for for this. So, like, George Lucas... This is for, like, the original Star Wars trilogy before George Lucas became George Lucas. Um, where... Let's see. Um, God, man. George Lucas's graph to excitement... Story, story graph. Sorry, should be graph. Damn, I don't know if how to find this. I think I'm using really the wrong kind of search terms for it as well. So, but basically. It's not even very scientific either way. So, like, it's not a scientific graph. I can just doodle it out on, in, like, Paint or, or Photoshop. And it, it would convey the exact same information that looking up the graph would convey. Because, like I said, it's not, it's not very scientific. It's just kind of showing the general idea of what you should be shooting for um, when it comes to, like, being engaging. And I really think this is important for most, mo most stories that are being written. Um, so let's just, I don't know, create a new one here. Let's do, the, sure, 700 by 400. That's fine. So, okay, so let's, let's draw ourselves a graph, okay? We're going to use some black and... Um, so we're gonna have here, we have our Y axis and here we have our X axis, right? Okay. So obviously on the X axis, we have, uh, we have time. My font is probably too big. Let's short, shrink it down to maybe not that small. So we have time, okay, on the X axis. And, um, oh, fuck off. move that over a little bit so I have a little bit more space for text. All right, and then over here we can say excitement or intrigue, engagement. Let's call it engagement. Engagement. Sure, it will be like that. I could have used vertical typing, but whatever. This is just to make a point. We're not going to make a beautiful piece of art here. So basically, the the idea of what George Lucas had, I believe is George Lucas. Maybe I have the wrong director. I'm pretty sure it's George Lucas because he's talking about Star Wars, the original trilogy. But I could be totally wrong here. Some movie director had recommended a graph that looks something like this, where you have, uh, you start with um, a peak, and then you quickly, a peak of, like, excitement. Sorry, that should be... You start with a peak of excitement that quickly kind of rolls off um, into a lull. And then as you move into the first act, you get a little bit more exciting before it kind of dulls out a little bit again. And then you go into... So this is like the intro. This is the end of the first act. You go into the second act. And then the third act, you're really ramping up the excitement. But you do kind of lull it out a little bit. And then when you go into the uh, conclusion, you're kind of right back up to the, the same peak as you started at in, ex in engagement, excitement, whatever. And then uh, you kind of conclude by kind of rolling it all off gently, right? So it's kind of something like this. Like I said, it's not a very scientific graph, so this is why I can just, it's just doodle it out like that. Um, there, oh, huh? 
I said stroke. Oh, it's because it's white. There we go. Let's try that again. Ooh, that's thick. It's a thick graph. <laughs> right. Anyways, you get the idea. It, it's something like this. So you have uh, your intro uh, here, right? And then you have your end, let's call it end act one here. And then you have end, end act two here. And then finally, end act three there. And finally, conclusion there. So something like that. So there you go. That's, that's what that looks like. And anyways, this whole point was to say, basically the, it kind of tried to do that. Cause you had the guy jumping off like it was intriguing but then it kind of i don't know i i don't know it it didn't stick with that it's kind of like it jumped off this cliff too soon like we were right here and it jumped off at this where's my <laughs> come on it feels like they needed to jump off and land here but they wound up jumping off from the exciting intro and landed here instead. It was too soon. I wasn't captivated yet. I didn't have enough information about the story, and so I wasn't engaged enough, and so I felt bored. Unfortunately, they decided the best way to engage a player was with writing, and the writing is the weakest part of the, ga of the whole thing. Rather than focusing on game mechanics, which might be interesting, but I don't know. They didn't do enough of it within the, the first 30 minutes, so... Anyways... There's that rant. What happened here? Did I try to open up something that I shouldn't have opened up? I don't know. Anyways. Um, balance seemed fine. I'm going to give a point for clarity. Unique identity. It did seem like it had an interesting world, even though it was poorly explained. Technically, it ran pretty well on my end. I, I know one of my... Discord user said that it didn't perform very well, but for me, it seemed to uh, run just fine. And I'm almost tempted to give it a polish. Just because, like, it... Ex you know, the, the art looks good. It explained... Like, it broke the tutorial down into multiple parts. Um, I don't know, man. I'm not saying you need to show off all of your game mechanics in the first 30 minutes. What I am saying is you should give the chance for the player to find the joy in your mechanics, like within the first 30 minutes. I got one tutorial fight and the half tutorial fight. And it's not 30 minutes, by the way. It's 35 minutes, okay? <laughs> and so basically, I only had two fights. One of them was spent the entire time explaining how to do stuff. The other one spent half of its time explaining how to do stuff. I didn't really get a chance to find the joy in the mechanics. I'm not saying you need to give everything right at the start. In fact, that would probably be a bad idea. Um... Because another thing that makes games interesting is how it can change over time, right? And it, usually games change over time by introducing new mechanics. So obviously, if you introduced everything right at the start and then had nothing new to introduce even an hour in, then the game is going to quickly start to feel pretty boring. Um, so anyways, I don't know. I'm going to leave it at the four. I'm not going to give it the polish. Um, yeah. That's what I have to say about that. <laughs> so, uh, anyways. Yeah, my controversial hot takes that apparently piss off devs uh, <laughs> aside, that all aside, um, it doesn't matter, right? That's what this packbook grading system is here. Just, just look at the number. Four is a little bit weak. They could fix that if they improve the accessibility. 
which I don't know why they didn't have like three bindable keys in there. It's kind of nuts. Um, I had another, by the way, I had another uh, developer point out, I think it was the developer of Corn Sausage who had replied to me last time. Despite me giving a pretty negative um, review of his game, he seemed to enjoy the, the review. And he just said that it, it's, he thinks it's too easy. You brought it up before. He, he thinks it's too easy that to get an accessibility point, all you have to do is add Yonfly's keyboard config. But I'm going to say this again. There is still an overwhelming trend of uh, developers not implementing it. So I will change the requirement for that point once I see that trend start getting broken. But until that trend is broken, until that point, I will continue to give a point to accessibility just for implementing a simple and easy plugin. So anyways, yeah. Uh, was there anything else I was gonna, uh, I don't think there's any, much else I wanted to talk about. I think I finally got the, the beta test out for my game now, and hopefully I'll have some folks playing it throughout this week and next week. And so I think next week I'll finally get to do a game dev stream, which is going to be like the first in, in quite a while. So um, I'm looking forward to that. I always enjoy the game dev streams, um, but I know they don't get as many views, but um, it's kind of nice. I, I enjoy getting to talk about my game some, and I have a lot to show off too. Um, Fortuna, since you're here, if you're interested in playtesting my game and you want to give me some overly harsh and critical feedback of my own game, uh, let me know. You can just send me a private message on the uh, RPG Maker forums and I'll send you the password to get access to the store page for my game. Other than that, was there anything else I needed to do? I feel like I always forget something whenever I close. The stream, I guess it's not super important. Gave the rating. Yeah, I think that's everything. Well, I'll try not to be such an asshole next time, but you know, I wouldn't count on it. I'm just an asshole. That's just who I am. Sorry about that. Anyways, uh, until next time, uh, next stream will be a game dev stream, and then after that, maybe we'll play some more RPG Maker games for me to apparently shit on and piss off devs. So, uh, that's about it. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, after the 10th of December. Yeah, maybe. Um... Are you talking? I don't know. Anyways, uh, whatever. Yeah, that's it. Uh, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.